Welcome to Palmer Stadium on the campus of Princeton University, where today we're going to bring you the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship between two undefeated teams, the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hi, I'm Bob Smith, and along with Leif Elsmo, we're going to be bringing you all the action of this great championship game. Leif, these two teams have not met since 1977, and that in a playoff game. That's right, Bob. It was a, a good game then. Hopkins won 16-9, so this is the second time they played each other in history. And, of course, the first time this year, both teams being undefeated. A dream matchup. Carolina has the best team speed and quickness in the league. Really awesome. They can kill you in so many different ways with their speed and quickness. Hopkins, on the other hand, equally as good in, tra in transition, but they have two of the hottest properties in lacrosse today. They've got Jeff Cook and they've got Brendan Schneck. And let me tell you, these are two guys to watch today. Brendan Schneck has 31 goals on the season, which is more than the whole first midfield on the North Carolina team. And, of course, he was an All-American attackman at Navy. He was an All-American midfielder at Hopkins last year, the most valuable player in the country. And Hopkins, you know, one of the best teams of all time. They've won three straight championships, something no other team has done, and now they're going for their fourth. They've won 22 straight games. They've won 47 out of their last 48. What more can you say? We're going to see the starting lineups now for North Carolina. Their starting attack. Number three, you see Mike Burnett, 5'10", 160 from Arnold, Maryland. Number 15, Monty Hill, 5'11", 165 from Charlottesville, Virginia. And number 25, Kevin Griswold, 5'11", 180 from Simsbury, Connecticut. And now the starting midfield for the Carolina Tar Heels. As we take a glance at the Hopkins huddle, Coach Henry Chickenroni preparing his people for their last bit of information. And here we have the Carolina midfield. Number eight, Doug Hall, 5'9", 150 from Levittown, New York. Number 21, Pete Vogel, 5'9", 175 from Baltimore, Maryland. And number 36, the big gun, who also faces off 6'3", 215 from Butler, Maryland, Steve Stenerson, number 36. Coming up next will be the starting defense for the Tar Heels. Great crowd here at Palmer Stadium. They may set a record for attendance at the Division I NCAA Championship lacrosse game today. On defense, number 12, Jamie Allen, 6'1", 185 from Levittown, New York. Number 13, Gary Burns, the All-American candidate, 6'1", 185 from Manhasset, Long Island. And number 37, Johnny Haas, 5'10", 185 from Ruxton, Maryland. Leading the starting lineup for North Carolina will be the goalie, sure to be an All-American this year, number 27, Tommy Sears. Sears has had as many as 24 saves in a single game while keeping the Tar Heels uh, on the unbeaten track for the entire season. Tommy Sears, he should be a standout today. Now we're just about set for the opening faceoff, facing off for North Carolina. We'll get back to the starting line for Hopkins quickly. As you see, starting on attack, the regulars for Hopkins all season, Jeff Cook, Jim Zafuto, Jeff Harris. On the starting midfield, Bill Cantelli, Henry Chickaroni, Brendan Schneck, the All-American. On defense, Lance Schneck, Dave Black, and Kevin Kiefer, and in the goal, Ryan Holman, number 40. There's the opening whistle, and we're just about set, and Howie Yappin has almost control, now loses control of the opening faceoff, and Carolina's gonna go down on offense for the first time in this game. Going in and taking a real good shot, right on goal was number eight, Doug Hall, and he has the first shot of the game, it's backed up nicely over there by Kevin Griswold. Doug Hall's an excellent midfielder, Bob, and we're gonna see a lot of running and gunning from this Carolina team. What a fantastic day, perfect weather, jam-packed stadium, Everybody here that wants to be here from the NCAA to see the best two teams in Division I play lacrosse. Griswold brings it in. They put it back out front. I'm anxious to see the kind of offense that Carolina runs. We have not been able to see them all season long. Bob, right, down now. Excuse me, go ahead, Lee. Right now they're setting up a play. They call, like to call play an opener every game, and they change it every game. Right now they'll probably go through a series of four or five passes and end up with uh, Pete Vogel with the ball taking the shot. That time Hall took the shot, easily handled by Brian Holman, and quick outlet pass to number 44 for Johns Hopkins, Walt Carswell. One of the things Hopkins does very well is clears the ball. And as you can see, they did it with very little trouble then against Carolina. Hopkins has beaten so many teams, as you said, by clearing the ball, doing everything well. From one end of the field to the other, they are mistake-free, or as close to it as a team can get. 18, Henry Chikaroni gives it over to number 25, Brendan Schneck. He's going to try his dodge right away and fire off. A nice feed inside is a footer, and he scores. A picture play, the kind of play Hopkins works with great regularity all season long, and Hopkins has the first goal just a minute gone here in the first quarter. Well, Schneck comes in, and of course, everybody's looking for Schneck to shoot. It's only one minute gone in the first quarter, and then it drew the defenseman up on Schneck. We can take a look at it, because Schneck is the gun that everybody has to double team. Now, he comes in, he's drawing a double team. You see him come up with the crease, and that leaves Zafuto wide open. He takes it, turns around with a lot of patience, fakes Sears low and goes high. Sears had no chance to stop that, and just like that, 
Hopkins gets a one nothing lead. The defending champions going for the fourth in a row national championship. Johnny Shipper facing off now against Tally Hopkins. Shipper for Carolina. Carolina white jerseys, white blue numerals, Carolina blue. And Johns Hopkins in there, Blue Jay blue jerseys with white numerals. Bringing the ball in now, Jeff Kendall. Kendall rolls in, he's gonna have an opening. Instead goes to pass it back to Jeff Cook. Overthrows it and Carolina will get their first opportunity to clear the ball. Just to, for those fans of you familiar with Johns Hopkins, that was Jimmy Zafuto, that's Z-A-F-F-U-T-O. And that misprint came from the program here. And uh, we apologize for that, but it's Jim Zafuto. Here's a John now, Hopkins. Johns Hopkins, 13-0 season. And we'll see that in all cases except against Navy, Hopkins handled all of their opponents fairly easily. 13-0, very impressive, Bob. And of course, that's why they're here in this championship uh, with 13-0 schedule. But Carolina also undefeated, and that makes only the second undefeated. Here's their record, 11-0. You can see the two playoff games, 13-6, 17-8. This is their first championship final game ever, and this team is really hot, undefeated. Monty Hill picked up there by Hatz Franklin. As Carolina works the ball very, very briskly out in front. I don't think Carolina has seen a team that plays midfield defense quite as toughly as Johns Hopkins. Another good shot taken inside there by Shipper. And ground balls here, very important. And we'll see a pushing ball probably coming up. And that's what it'll be. The referees in today's game will be the referee, as you see right now, Bob Schlenger on the far side, the near side, Charlie Phillips. And also today from the Carolina area will be Mike Peterson. Bob well, Schlenger from Baltimore, Charlie Phillips from Pennsylvania, and Peterson from North Carolina. Bob, this is the third midfield for uh, North Carolina, and you can watch it. They're actually the third, but it's their second best, or maybe their best offensive midfield. This midfield has scored 35 goals this year, tops in the midfield units for North Carolina. Josh Shipper handling the ball back. Excuse me, that's Andy Smith handling the ball out front. Andy Smith, the most highly recruited lacrosse player in Baltimore last year from St. Mary's College, excuse me, St. Mary's High School in Annapolis, Maryland. We're watching Griswold behind the goal. Griswold is an All-American midfielder who was converted to attack this year. Griswold getting a lot of heat from Dave Black. Runs inside, beats him. This is the goal. The inside roll, the, uh, the move that most attackmen prefer to move close to the goal when they're being pressured, as Griswold was by Dave Black. Griswold has 15 goals and uh, 15 assists on the air, 30 points, but he actually scored more last year as a midfielder. Tough transition to make from midfield to attack, and Griswold's done it as well as can be expected. Mike Burnett. Leading scorer on the team for North Carolina. Now being picked up by Lance Schneck. Schneck with a good rap check. Burnett turns and fires and hits the plate. And Brian Holman standing tall, not looking much better. And Holman runs the ball out to the end line, and Hopkins will gain possession. This is a great play because Burnett is the top gun for North Carolina. He's got 22 goals, 30 assists. Watch him come in with the inside row. He picks a spot, and what a great save by Holman. He was going for the corner and just about had it, but not only was it a great save, but he runs it out in the back line to give Hopkins the ball. Again, pointing out that Hopkins is so consistent with every phase of the game. If you let down in one phase, they're going to take advantage of it. Bringing the ball up now, very, very good. Jeff Kendall, and there's a... Uh, Looks like a pretty good slash dust, but no call comes. And Kendall rolls in across the top of the box and clears the ball easily for Johns Hopkins. Jimmy Zaputo now handling. Zaputo has been the key in the playoffs for Johns Hopkins, having scored five goals against the University of Virginia in the quarterfinal. It really has, and everybody talks about the team speed, and of course we alluded to it, of North Carolina, but this Hopkins team can do everything. They just like to use the power moves because that's what Schneck and Cook do best. Jeff Cook picked up by Johnny Haas. Cook will come back and shoot. A good high bouncer. This field is in beautiful shape. It's probably as fine a manicure lacrosse field as we've seen all season. And one of the things that the goalies have to be a little concerned about is it's not a dirt crease area. There is grass in there, and the ball has a tendency to skip on the grass rather than kick off like it does on the dirt. Absolutely. But this, uh, the both teams have to be very happy with this field, especially Hopkins, who plays uh, at a disadvantage with dirt on their field. Spooter now trying to come back out front, turns and fires. Tommy Sears picks it up, looking for a quick outlet, and finds it over here with Gary Burns, the All-American defenseman. You know, Bob Sears is a great goalie. Two years ago when he was drafted out of school, or not drafted, but picked up to play college ball, Coach Ciccaroni from Hopkins wanted Sears first, Holman second. North Carolina, Willie Scroggs got uh, Sears, and Holman's proven to be almost as good so far in his sophomore year. Good check there by Lance Schneck, picked the ball away from Mike Burnett. And Jeff Cook coming up to help out on the clear. Gets the feed right at midfield line. Looks to me early in the game, Leaf, that the officials are going to let him play today. I have, I've seen a couple of uh, hits that I'm sure would have been penalties earlier, earlier in the season. They are, and again, when we talk about refereeing, it's just like any other sport. You want consistency, and as long as the referees are consistent throughout the game, that's all either team can ask. Back over to Brendan Schneck. Schneck starts a hard move. He'll fire from there. Hurts and Sears picks that off easily. 
We covered it. Okay, Telly overruns it. Number seven for Hopkins. A lot of hitting going on out there. It's a very, very warm and humid day here at Princeton University. And the team with the best depth and best conditioning certainly will have a distinct advantage. On paper, that's nice got to be Carolina. Pass. Back across field. Carolina, though, picked up very nicely by Brendan Schneck. Number 21 rolling in top was Peter Vocal. Vocal turns and fires. Those shots aren't going to go against Brian Holman. You have to take the corners or bounce the ball. Holman picks off the high hard shot very well. Nice stick handling there on the part of Jamie Allen for North Carolina. And they go back on offense. The ball's really moving back and forth now, and you're getting to see what our transition game could do. North Carolina's supposed to have the advantage, but here comes Hopkins. Back with a fast break. Over to Jeff Harris, and Harris misses it. And that'll kill the fast break, as he's still under a lot of pressure from Jamie Allen. Nice hit by Allen. He puts the ball back in play. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Who gets the ball? Ryan Holman puts it back out. Now he loses it. A lot of hitting going on out there. Unbelievable. Nice move by Mike Burnett. He steps on the line, however, and throws the ball out of bounds. And referee calls down. Great play, riding and clearing by both teams, started by Jamie Allen, who was the MVP in the junior college tournament last year, and here he is one year later in the national finals. He's got to be pretty happy, but he intercepted that pass, brought it up, and almost a one-on-one, -on -one, but Holman came 30 yards out of the crease to intercept the ball. Good move by Brian Holman as he anticipated a tough situation one-on-one -on -one if he did not get the ball out of there. 9-21 remaining in the first quarter of the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship. Comes Jeff Kendall rolling in, but Carolina gets back in the hole very, very well. John Basil picking up Kendall there. And they give it up to Jeff Cook. Jeff Cook, the trigger man, the quarterback on offense for Johns Hopkins. Roll, tries the inside roll, and that comes back. Double team, fires and scores! And that's what Jeff Cook will do for you. He'll beat you two times, three times. He is indomitable going to the goal. And Hopkins has their second goal. They now lead Carolina. Two to nothing, 8.59 remaining in the first quarter. Bob, this is vintage Cook, and let's... Uh... We're going to take a look at Cook right here. This is Vintage Cook, power all the way. You see the double team come across? He's a football player, and he comes in and dodges that ball, puts it right inside the pipe. He's got the size of a football player, and he loves to pull in, use the power move, and with the great stick work, this guy can take control of a game, as we mentioned in the pregame, anytime he has a good day. Jeff Cook, 5'11", 190 from Pikesville, Maryland. Stenerson again, facing off against Offit. Breaks it back, picks it up on the dead run. He's going to be sandwiched there, a real good hit. A nice inside feed in the first goal for... North Carolina as Monty Hill gets the good feed on the far side over there from Mike Burnett. And Carolina now trails 2 to 1, 8.50 remaining in the first quarter. Burnett to Hill, that's what they hope to see a lot of today. And Monty Hill playing crease has 24 goals on the year, a percentage, shooting percentage of higher than 50%. That means every two shots he takes is going to score a goal. Let's watch the fast break as they come down. Here's uh, Burnett. He passes over. He sees Hill joining the defense. He dumps it over to Hill. Monty puts it right in behind Holman, who had no chance to compensate from that five-yard uh, slide, and just like that, they needed that goal badly, two to one, with eight minutes and 50 seconds left. Once again, Stenerson against Offit. Good move, you see Stenerson gets his foot right inside and tries to keep it off it off the, off it off the ball. Jeff Holmeyer in there trying to help out. Recovered nicely by Stenerson. Stenerson is a big lad, 6'3", 215 pounds from Butler, Maryland. He is good size, but he's going against Howard Offit, who's 5'10", 180, but he's real powerful and probably the best face-off man in Division One now, especially with Kraus coming off that injury and not playing up to par in the last half of the season. That shot kind of ill-advised there, no backup for Carolina. Brian Holman alertly runs the ball out, and Hopkins will gain possession back in the corner. Eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Johns Hopkins two, North Carolina one in the NCAA Division I lacrosse championship game. Bob, so far we've seen pretty much what we expected. We saw Hopkins use the power move with Cook, which they'll use. They'll use it with Schneck. They'll use it with a number of their personnel. And we saw the transition game of Carolina give them a goal. So that's the way the game should set up. We should see a lot more of that before the day's out. Lance Schneck almost scores a goal for Carolina as he throws it back to, to the inside of Brian Holman. Now we'll see Carolina back in a zone ride. Uh, Hopkins clears the ball easily. They get a lot of help from the attack. Pluto now comes in looking for some openings. Rolls in. He can shoot from there. It gives it off to Harris. Harris under a little bit of heat, though, from Gary Burns. And Carolina goes back up. Here comes Kevin Griswold. No fast break, however, as he's picked up nicely over there by Dave Black. There's a shot. A beautiful shot. What a shot from number eight, Doug Hall, as he got the ball from Kevin Griswold. And Carolina ties this game 2 all. 7.46 remaining in the first quarter. You talk about a, a smoker. This thing must have been going 110 miles an hour. It came in Griswold, the midi, 
comes down the converted mid. He comes down the wing mid. He's looking for somebody to feed. Nobody's, everybody's picked up, so he dumps it off to Doug Hall, who is following the play. Doug Hall takes that right-handed shot, put his whole body into it. It had to be 100 plus miles an hour, and Holman just how it go right over his left hand and shoulder to the right hand corner of the net at seven minutes and 46 seconds left. Just like that, two to two. This game should be tough down to the fourth quarter, Bob. Once again, facing off this time, John Schiffer for Carolina, and Hallie Offit is going to be a tired young man at the end of the fourth quarter when this game is over if he continues to do all the faceoffs for Johns Hopkins. Nice job by Offit. Offit pulls the stick very well as he's almost double teamed. Back to Brian Holman, a good outlet pass up to Dave Black, and Hopkins will have the ball cleared. Once again, a bad pass after which Jeff Harris will have got a pass. And this is the worst clearing we've ever seen Hopkins uh, perform. Well, you won't see that very play. often. Yeah, you yeah. won't see him make a bad pass. They are so consistent in the mid-stripes, and we saw not too long ago in the semifinals against Virginia, a Virginia team that was very well. There's Ciccaroni, Coach Ciccaroni for the Johns Hopkins team, and he's shaking his head because his team, again, does not make those mental breakdowns and technical uh, breakdowns that many times. They're well drilled, an excellent coaching staff, five deep on each side. As a matter of fact, Bob, if you suited up the coaching staffs, uh, that team would probably make the playoffs. Uh, excellent <laughs> talent, and most of them have got their schooling and playing time in at Johns Hopkins. All-Americans Mike O'Neill and Donnie Zimmerman helping out uh, Billy Scribes of North Carolina at Johns Hopkins. All-Americans Freddie Smith, Joe Callen, Dennis Townsend, along with Jerry Pfeiffer and Jimmy Amon. You know, we talked about the jittery feeling that Carolina, Carolina makes uh, experience being the first time in the playoffs. That, I would have to say, is gone right now. Another high, hard shot taken over there. This time taken by, we believe, number, looking over number 36, Steve Stenerson. He comes out of the game now. And it's replaced on offense by number eight, Doug Hall. As Carolina goes back on our attack. Mike Burnett, number three, picked up by Lance Schneck. Instead of a stack in front of the goal, but Burnett is almost knocked down. Now he comes clean, looks outside, and the ball rolls out of the top of the stick, and we'll see what the call is. He was in the crease. Burnett came around. He was double, triple team. He tried to dish it off out front, but the double team came so fast from Hopkins. Two or three guys on top of Burnett, because he's the guy they're looking for. He didn't get a chance. Now we'll see him coming from behind. Watch your screen, the monitor. Here he is, triple, double team, and he gets slammed into the crease with a legal check, and that, of course, means that the ball will go to Hopkins. They'll get the opportunity to clear it. Ryan Holman looks up to Brandon Schneck. They have a two and one midfield clear on the near side. And Schneck will easily run across the midfield line. And they get it downfield quickly to Bill Cantelli. And back point behind to Jeff Cook. And Cook throws it all the way. It's a try to feed the piece to Harris. And Harris under a lot of heat inside. And we're watching Hopkins move the ball very, very quickly. They put pressure on you when you're when they're down and you're into the field. And you better be alert. They you'll do. find yourself on the short end of the score. But you know, Bob, you mentioned a minute ago that you hadn't seen them clear uh, as, as doggedly as they have, and I think they are a little bit tight, if, if not as much as Carolina, maybe because they're thinking about that team speed that they've heard about. They haven't played them all year long. They've heard nothing but look at Carolina's team speed, watch their quickness. It's not Chip Maroney trying to feed over to Harris. And they slide nicely on Harris, but I think there'll either be a push or come to the rear. We'll call it a push, a loose ball push, and Hopkins will retain possession. They're sliding out. They've seen this, this play a number of times, obviously. You can watch Cook, uh, excuse me, Jeff Harris coming out from the this crease. This is off the far side. And there comes Burns the up behind team. him. The double team. Burns comes. Then, of course, number 33 comes up behind him to help out. And that is a push from behind, 33 being Roy Messinger. Ball stays down for Hopkins to control. It's all even. No penalty situation. The loose ball. Ball on the push. Any technical foul where the ball is loose, all you do is give possession to the other team. Bill Cantelli now being very patient out front. Picked up over there by Johnny Basil. Fires the scores, and there was no screen, no excuse. I'm not sure what that was. Tommy Sears got beat stick side on a low outside shot. A nice shot by Bill Cantelli, and Hopkins moves out on top. 3-2, to 5-24 remaining in the first quarter. Bill Cantelli, a 5-8, 165-pound sophomore. Watch him come in. It's 3-2. Hopkins, as he comes in with his third goal of the day, look, he cranks up the right-handed shot, a shot that Tom Sears normally is going to save. Tom Sears saving 69% of the shots taken uh, at his goal, but that one went in with a great shot by Cantelli to give Hopkins a 3-2 lead with still five Five minutes left and 24 seconds in the first quarter. He may have been screened by his own defenseman as we saw it on the replay there, and that might have been what blocked his vision because the shot was from about 15 yards away. Uh, still no control on the faceoff. And we're going to have a uncontrolled screen. Doug Hall was playing with the hand off the stick. He had one hand in, and his loose hand was pushing off of the defender. That is illegal. The ball is going to go to Hopkins on that uh, faceoff. Coach Freddie Smith. We'll get a chance to look at it. 
as we uh, get the replay. Watch the left hand. He comes in. Watch the left hand. Push off a little bit. There he goes. Pushes off. That, my friend, is a foul. And oh, oh, again, your three arms blocking the cross. What a game this would be. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there's plenty of contact in the cross. We don't need. Uh, we have to maintain the rules. Mm -hmm. Jeff Cook now trying an inside roll again. Puts across the crease. The Pluto does not handle very well, though, on the bouncer. And Hopkins will go back and reload. You see Hopkins selling it down. Now watch how they just be very, they're very patient, they're very patterned. They're going to set up, hopefully what they'd like to do is get an isolation to create a slide from the defense that they can use their uh, superior stick work. Hopkins setting up the screen in front of the goal with Mike McGee. Now going back outside, Kendall fires and scores. He beats Tommy Sears. But if they don't clear that screen out in front of the goal, uh, North Carolina is going to be in for a long day. Hopkins moves out on top by two again. Four to two, they lead Carolina. Four to 36, defending in the first quarter. Jeff Kendall, a junior transfer from Smyrna Park. He's 6'1", 170, and these one-on-ones are killing uh, Carolina. He comes in with a left-handed shot. Sears, again, looked like he should have read the play and come down on it. Uh, the first five shots the Hopkins took were all high, pretty ineffective with these low shots. Sears is not getting a good read on them. As you mentioned, this grass may be having him squirt a little bit. This is one of the few creases that I can remember seeing, by where there's grass all the way through the crease. You were saying earlier, and the ball is not kicking up. It's skimming along the grass. Finally controlled by Carolina momentarily, though, however, as Hal Yoffin continues to pursue it, along with number 18, Jeff Homeyer for Carolina. Pick up loose in front of the goal. Stenerson, a backhanded shot, we believe a shot, but Hal Yoffin snares it, and Hopkins is on their way up the field. I'll tell you, both teams are running pretty well. With this hot day, with the sun beating down by the fourth quarter, we're going to see what depth has to say about what these teams running again. Lance Schneck up to Howie Offit. Offit will clear the ball across the midfield line as Carolina drops back in his own. And they give it off quickly to Joe Saletti over to Jim Zafudo. I can see Coach Henry Chickaroni on the sideline saying, settle it down, settle it down, take your time. They don't want to get in a running match with these guys. They're in control right now of the game, 4-2, and they want to keep it that way. Harris fires and scores, and Sears, not having one of his best days, as Harris from 12 yards away fires that right over Tommy Sears' shoulder. Hopkins has the biggest lead of the game. They now lead 5-2. 345 remaining in the first quarter. You know, Sears was one of the guys that everybody pointed to to be a key to this game. He's one of the top goalies in the cross. He's only a sophomore, though, and maybe the pressure has gotten to him. Some of these early goals have him a little bit rattled. We'll see Harris driving in. Again, the third straight unassisted one-on-one -on -one goal. He comes in, cranks up, and just fires from about 12 yards. That goal would normally be saved by Tom Sears, but something has got him off his game. And if he doesn't get it in shape real fast, North Carolina's going to have a long, long day. Carolina called for delay. They failed to set up quickly enough on the faceoff. 25 seconds elapsed, and Hopkins is awarded the ball. That, that kind of penalty can, can hurt you, particularly when you just had three goals scored on you right in rapid succession. Absolutely, and unassisted goals, three in a row. They're not getting the slides, and they're getting beat with a one-on-one -on -one game. Scoot over to Harris. Harris back behind to Henry Chikaroni. As Hopkins works an invert, now puts two midfielders behind the goal and brings their entire attack out in front of the goal. Schneck trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, trying to isolate against Peter Vocal. Turns and fires wide of the goal as he kept moving in against Vocal, moving in with every turn, getting closer to the goal. Peter Vocal playing defense on Schneck. There's uh, Brendan Schneck, Mr. All-Everything. He was All-American in attack, but at Navy, came to Hopkins and last year was an All-American midfielder, first team, also the most valuable player in the league. But he was playing against that time against Pete Vocal, who is only a sophomore for Carolina, but who is uh, also an honorable mention All-American in his own right. He was a very good player for Carolina. Tommy Sears now walking up with the ball as Hopkins pops back in the triangle. Riding very tightly on the defensive end of the field against the Carolina attackman. Give it over nicely to Johnny Haas, and Haas is going to clear it across the midfield line, but he's in a lot of trouble now. He tries to run between two defensive ball players for Johns Hopkins. The ball picked up by Kilner. He loses it as Marty Bergen puts it back towards the only safe area behind his own goal. Ryan Holman quickly out to Walt Carswell. He's in a little bit of trouble. A nice hit there by number 21, Peter Vogel. Unbelievable hit. And that is heads up ball, and it's a clean hit. Carswell knows it. You see him getting up. He's all right. That's just the wind knocked at him. But Pete Vogel got about a 10 yard beat on him, like he would have playing safety in a football game. He comes flying up. Carswell had turned his body to catch the pass. Now look, he turns around and Pete Vogel timed it beautifully. Hit him right in the front square, just in the middle of the body. Perfectly legal hit. The ball goes out of bounds. That kind of thing can turn the ball game around for a team that's struggling. That, and North Carolina is struggling right now. Carswell stays in the game. Let's get over to Pete Vogel. Vogel trying to dodge in. No movement toward the goal as Vogel tried to dodge. Nice stick work in there by Dougie Hall. Doug Hall's a transferred uh, attackman. This, this year's attackman, this year's a midfielder. Backside yeah. feed, a shot and a score. 
Over there, second by number 25, Kevin Griswold. He twirled his stick once and third of the bouncer by Brian Holman. And now Carolina cuts Hopkins' lead. They trail five to three, 229 remaining in the first quarter. Griswold, uh, again, first team All-American last year, a midfielder, a very, very solid player. Carolina moved the ball real well. Now watch, he makes a nifty little fake here. He sights it up, he sees he has a good shot, good try, and he bounced it about two yards in front of Holman, and it came right underneath the pipe, which is a very tough save for goalie to make, because he's playing for the ball to bounce over top of the goal. And in that case, it went right underneath a great shot by Griswold to bring him back to five to three. As we mentioned, that hit sometimes can turn the tide to get things going back in your favor. Ball still rolling loose, Hoffman almost controls. He's gonna pursue a little further, picks it up, and he'll throw it back to Brian Holman. Hoffman's dominating the faceoffs, Bob. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven faceoffs to one for Carolina. Howie Offit, his uh, credentials are 5'10", 180, so he's a little overmatched in size, but doing an outstanding job against center. But you know, in the faceoffs, a smaller and more compact man has an advantage because he has the lower center of gravity and he can drive the other man off the ball. Ball break brought in now by Saletti as he dodges past a couple of Carolina defenders. And Hopkins goes back on offense. Tommy Sears having a few moments here to get himself together after being kind of bombed in the uh, late going here in the first quarter. Absolutely. What Tommy Sears needs right now, he's a great goalie, but he's had to make some adjustments. He needs a couple good saves to get him back into his game. There's a double team by Carolina. On Jeff Cook. Zaputo. And Sears knocks it down and stares it. The alert. Goalie will always be able to knock down those passes over Great play ball. by Sears. That was a great play by Sears, and it could get him back a little more relaxed, a little more into his game. Quick feet inside, trying to get the ball inside to the cutter, number 18, Jeff Homeyer. But alertly, that was knocked down in front of the Hopkins goal, and now Hopkins will try to clear against the Carolina zone ride. Great ride by Griswold, knocked it right back into Hospital's stick. Monty Hill almost snares that one. The ball still not cleared. A lot of pressure being put on here, and that's a rat check around the throat. That'll cost somebody a minute for me, Dougie Hall. We'll see if they call it a hold or a slash. But he called a hold, a 30-second technical foul, and Hopkins will be attacking the goal with six men, and Carolina will have only five to defend. Well, watch Doug Hall. He comes in here playing against Joe Saletti of Hopkins. Doug Hall comes across. He wants to get the stick, but he missed. He got the neck, and he knows it's a foul, so he let the stick go, but the referee was right there, and he still called it a holding. Good call by the referee. He was right on the spot. Well, now Johns Hopkins is going to have your first extra man situation. Leaf, I think you have some outstanding statistics on North Carolina extra man. They really do. On the man down, they are the leader in all of lacrosse. They only allow .136 efficiency for the team that's going against their team. Hopkins, conversely, has a very good man down. They allow like 35%. But this team, for instance, last week against Navy, Navy took 11 shots, only scored once. This could be a big factor in today's game. Now we see trying to feed backside and back out front. And Chip Runny will fire from there. A good save by Tommy Sears as he drops to his knees. That's the shot that Hopkins likes to take on extra man from out front again on with the screen in front of the goal. Five. Sears coming out of the goal. Tommy uh, has not come out of the goal so far. We see 26 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock in this quarter. Still a lot of pressure now. Man breaks downfield very quickly. That's number 20, Johnny Shipper. He's going to roll in and try to score with a few seconds remaining. A nice feed inside. A beautiful shot. Taken in there by Mike Burnett as he came underneath the defense. And now Carolina only trails by one. Hopkins five, Carolina four. 16 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. A critical goal. Absolutely beautiful, though. Chris Bueller, number two, playing on the crease. And Shipper came down with a fast break and fed him on the crease. This is the kind of thing where almost too many passes can hurt you. But the great stick work by the Carolina team. Watch Shipper come in. Look at he sees uh, Mueller underneath him. Mueller takes it and behind the back, reverses the crease, reverses the shot, and puts it right by Holman to the far pipe. A beautiful shot, very typical of what Carolina can do to a team. And just like that, they're back in the game at five to four with only 16 seconds left in the first quarter. Anderson against Offit again on the faceoff. Ball rolls back. Stenerson trying to break her. Runs over top of Offit. Still no control. Picked up now by Jeff Kendall. He's under pressure. And Aaron pass back inside to Brendan Schneck. will be able to pick it up. Schneck has a fast break. If he can beat his man down inside, he'll be over to Harris. Harris into Zafuto. Zafuto quickly over to Cook. Hey, Cook scores! How beautiful fast break. And now they say no goal. No goal. No goal. Tom Sears knew it was no goal. Time had expired in the quarter. Time well, just Sears expired. is watching the clock, I guess. And that is the end of the first quarter. Before we go to the quarterfinals, we'll let's take a right look up. at the video. Here we come down. 
You see the fast break with Schneck. He has uh, time elapsing here, but they don't know how much it is. He comes over to Zafudo. Zafudo's lining it up. Now, now it's into Zafudo. Zafudo looks across to Cook. Cook dumps it in. Sears heard the gun. He knew it was no good. He appealed to the referee, and he upheld that decision. No goal, split second timing. 5 4, and we'll be right back after this message. Two excellent teams ranked one and two for most of the season, Bob, and they're playing up to those uh, capabilities right now. Five to four. The goal by Cook, as time elapsed in the first quarter, could end up being a decisive goal later in the game. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Facing off again, Stenerson for Carolina in white, and Howie Offit in blue for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Hopkins has been dominating the faceoffs. Still no control. Picked up nicely over there on the far side, and Keep rolling down off. Quickly is number 21, Peter Vocal. Vocal takes a shot and pays for that as he's dumped hard to the turf by Brennan Schneck after shooting. Uh, but backed up nicely on the end line over there by number 15, Monty Hill. So Carolina will gain possession. Peter Vocal again, the All-American, honorable mention All-American from North Carolina. Probably the biggest gun or one of the best guns on the Carolina team. There's great coach uh, Willie Scroggs, through his third year at North Carolina after six years helping at Johns Hopkins. He knows this Blue Jay team. Donnie Hill puts it out front, quickly to Hall. Hall fires, backed up by Mike Burnett. Carolina setting up the screen now in front of the goal and shooting from the outside. And we'll see if they continue to do that. Here comes Burnett now coming in hard against Lance Schneck. Nice hop, skip, jump, and Burnett loses the ball as he tries to put it out front. But hustling Carolina, trying to gain possession as they try to get it back on offense. Picked off by Kevin Kilner, number 21. And Kilner puts it out to the far side over to Dave Black. And Black will settle it down and try to set up the field. Carolina now pressing a little bit on the ride as they get it over to Marty Bergen. Bergen under a lot of heat from number three, Mike Burnett. Gets by him. A good hustling ride by Carolina. And what we see in there now, and now they're coming off the field, and you can't see it in your view, as the defensive midfield that was just playing for, for Hopkins. So they have to get them off on the fly. Kendall comes up and he'll fire and knock down at the last minute on a good slide in there by Jamie Allen. And Carolina goes back the other way. A lot of transition in this game early here in the second quarter. 13.42 remaining as they come, Carolina comes down and tries to push the ball over to Griswold, and they overthrow it. They overthrow it. I'll tell you what, a, a fast game like that's going to take its toll on these teams. I don't care how many midfielders you have. When you're running your first or second units, and they make two or three sprints, there again is Willie Scroggs yelling. He's not that happy. That's the transition game that he likes and they're successful with. But they're throwing the ball out of bounds, and I have to think that it's because of fatigue. Winning now as... Hopkins sets up their clear. Ryan Holman bringing it up very slowly. Carolina now riding on. It's actually a zone ride in the defensive end as they try to flip it up to a breaking midfielder, Bill Cantelli. He's still out across the midfield line, a little bit of trouble, and he lobs it off to Dave Black. Black will get it down here in the corner to Jeff Cook. Hopkins selling it down now. They're waiting for the midfielders to get back in into position. Now back out front to Brendan Schneck. Johns Hopkins running their first midfield a little more than we're used to seeing them. That's Henry Ciccaroni, number 18, with the ball now. Number seven, Bill Cantelli, and number 25, Brendan Schneck. Coach Ciccaroni's gonna run this midfield unit as long as they say, yes, we can go. This, these are their guns. Here comes Schneck. Now Schneck backs off momentarily. Takes a beautiful play as he rose it to Cantelli, but it was picked up nicely over there by Messenger, number 33. Now they put a point behind the Cook. Cook has his defenseman hung up. Nice shot and a nice save. Good, good shot by Sears, uh, Cantelli and saved nicely by Tommy Sears. Sears seems to have regained his composure. Oh, great save by Sears, Bob. And you can tell right away, you're right, he has regained his composure, and that is all important. He had to read the grass. The grass, as we mentioned, goes underneath the goal. In most cases, that's worn away by constant play. But here, this is probably the first game of the year on this surface, and he, the bounces, he wasn't reading the bounces properly. They were skidding underneath his stick. He, now, you can see when he makes a save, he goes down on his knees, he puts his whole body in front of it. He doesn't want to make those mistakes anymore. A lot of fans still coming into this game, and this may be a record crowd for the NCAA Division I Championship. Tommy Sears now calling a midfielder back to help out, and that would be number 18, Jeff Homeyer. You know, Bob, as we see him try to make the clear, uh, I want to mention that, as we did before, Scroggs and uh, two of the assistant coaches all went to Hopkins, so they know their plays. Coach Ciccarone had to change some of the call numbers and the keys just so that they wouldn't be picked up by the coaching staff. Carolina back on attack now, looking back out front for some help over to Homeyer. He'll fire it, and that ball bounces out to the right side of the goal. Homeyer with the fire, but taken with no screen, and probably uh, Homeyer would like to have that back. 
Well, Holmeyer, uh, he likes to, sh the, to shoot that uh, ball because he's the fourth leading scorer with 23 goals. Back out front now to number 26, Andy Smith, the highly recruited freshman from St. Mary's in Annapolis, Maryland. Being picked up there by Walt Carswell. Carolina, a very good stick handling team. That shot taken over there was a uh, gimme as far as Brian Holman was concerned, right in the stick. Brian Holman to me like has this. looked as good as Sears has all through the years. Holman has really come into his own and has really shown it, especially in the playoffs. There was some question last year, of course, uh, Hopkins had the All-American goalie, Mike Federico. And there was some question if, as, if Holman would live up to that, and he certainly has done every bit that's been asked of him in this 1981 season. Absolutely. There you see Dave Black. Dave Black holds uh, a dubious record. The second place man as far as penalties and the season has six. He's the first place man. He has 23 on the season. Doing a nice job there, regaining the ball after having it checked away. And Black comes across the midfield line and throws it out to Jeff Harris. Harris would be open all day on clears. That's especially coming up and helping out on the clear. Back over once again to Jeff Cook. And Cook's waiting for the midfielder on the far side, Jeff Kendall, to get back in. Cook being picked up there by Johnny Haas. Pushes off Haas slightly, comes back out in front. We're going to have a penalty call. As he turns and shoots and scores, he steers offside. And that's Johns Hopkins' sixth goal. They now lead North Carolina 6 to 4, 10 19 remaining in the second quarter. We'll see. It's going to be a cross check. So not only does Carolina lose uh, the advantage of having a goal scored against them, but now they're going to be down a man for a minute. Uh, unless, Carol, unless, of course, they get possession. This is Jeff Cook's specialty. He loves to go one on one, and he's got the power to stick work to do it. Watch him work in here beautifully. He goes right, he's being turned off, so he comes back. He was going for his left hand. Now he's back to his right handed shot. He dives in, loses his feet almost, and puts it right between the legs of Sears. So now, if Hopkins can gain possession, they'll have the extra man advantage. If they cannot, of course, Carolina will still have to get it into the box, the attack box for them, in order to have their man come out of the penalty box. Bob, before that goal, we've had nine goals scored, and nine North different Carolina men had made those scores. You can see the consistency or the, the breadth of talent on both teams. That was Cook's second goal. He scored the first or the second goal of the game at 8.59 in the first quarter. Timeout, North Carolina. Coach Willie Scroggs feels it's a good time for a timeout. I think he had 10 men on the field, and rather than risk a penalty or delay, he decided to call a timeout. Looking down now as both teams huddle up. Of course, both teams, each their, each team only gets two timeouts a half, so he just used up, if it was because of 10 men on the field, he used up a valuable timeout with uh, 10 minutes still left in the first half that he may have wanted to use later on with time running out in the half. That last shot taken by Jeff Cook beat Sears to the inside. Between, in other words, the ball went between Sears and the pipe. I noticed Sears is dropping to his knees on almost every shot, and uh, pretty soon Hopkins is going to be reading that making low and going high and firing it over his shoulder. Absolutely. See some of the excellent crowd here at Princeton Palmer Stadium. The stadium built in 1911, I believe. It's and, very impressive. Uh, it's impressive from the outside, and of course, it's holding 47,000, uh, serving the NCAA well for the cross championships. Record crowd is expected. You know, talking about timeouts and the flow of the game, we talked to Willie Scroggs, Coach Willie Scroggs of North Carolina, and asked him just how he uses timeouts to affect that flow. We'll use our timeouts to break up Hopkins' momentum as we have against our opponents, or if we need one to set something up, we'll use one. Coach Willie Scroggs, the uh, great coach in North Carolina, in his third year, brought them to their first championship game ever in their 18-year history of the cross club at North Carolina. Waiting now, it's Tennyson will face off once again for North Carolina and Hallie Offit for Johns Hopkins. Almost in position. Ball kicked out by Offit as he likes to do off and roll it back towards his own goal. Picks it up nicely, gets it back to Brian Holman. Almost now a little bit of trouble. Quick feet inside. The shot, a great save by Brian Holman. On an excellent shot taken left handed there by Kevin Griswold. The ball rolls out of bounds and Carolina will gain possession by virtue of the fact that they were closer to the spot where the ball went out of bounds when it went out of bounds. Absolutely. Even though the ball was coming back away from the play, it was still a shot deflected off the goalie, and therefore, whoever's closest to it, that team gets possession of the ball. But a great play by Holman, as you said, because Griswold had a point-blank shot but a poor angle. Gr or Holman kept his poise, cut off the angle, and made a beautiful save. Back out front now to number 34 for Carolina. Blue, excuse me, blue flag Carolina, Tar Heels. 34, 34 for the Tar Heels, Terry Martinello. It's Terry Martinello, brother of Ronnie Martinello, who plays at the University of Maryland. 
Hopkins now once again will try to clear the ball. Brian Holman will have possession as we see him standing there. Must be a little warm in those sweatpants today. Well, you bet it is, but uh, the goalies all have a, uh, you know, the, a uniform that they're used to. Some wear tight uh, sweatpants, some wear loose, some wear shorts, but uh, they get used to that protection and they like to play with it no matter what the weather is. Back over to Holman now. Carolina in a press ride. Burnett putting a lot of heat on Brian Holman. Holman tries to lob it up to Dave Black. And Dave Black still not out of trouble. Finds Cantelli across the middle. And beautiful stick work gets the ball up to Kevin Keeper. And he'll get it over to Henry Ciccaroni Jr. Now it is Zafudo. Zafudo point behind to Jeff Cook. The Cook poise of the Hopkins up. team is very evident. Don't you think, Bob? They are really yeah. in together. They're very poised, very controlled. And they're setting up the tempo the way they want it. Cook now pushing out front, looks for the double team, gets it, gives it off to Brendan Schneck. Schneck feeds a cutter coming in front of the goal, Jeff Harris. And Harris is handled nicely there on a good slide by Jamie Allen. And Tommy Sears picks off the errant shot. That's a move that the Hopkins attack all use, all three of the starters. They'll cut from behind the goal when the ball is out front. When they have great speed, and many, many times they're open, and they'll fire the ball in the cage from there. Carolina now clearing the ball easily. Nice check over the head by Marty Bergen. If they get the ball back out front, we'll see what this call is. All sides being called against North Carolina. They'll lose possession. And it looks like number 21, Peter Vocal, a little late getting back. And Hopkins will go on offense. What you saw was Jamie Allen, number 12, going way across the midfield stripe to help clear the ball. And of course, what happens there is to maintain the on sides, you have to have somebody on the far side of the field come back on and stay where he normally would be. So there are always is three players uh, on that one half of the field. The midfielder didn't do it. Normally his responsibility, offsides, the ball goes back to Hopkins. Brendan Schneck eludes uh, Kevin Griswold on the far sideline. line. comes up to the midfield line and clears easily for Johns Hopkins. They better pick up Schneck because he'll roll in across the top of that box if they let him roll. Here he comes now. Draws a double team, however, puts the ball back point behind a Cook. Feed knocked down as he tries to feed Jeff Harris. And we'll have a timeout being called by Coach Henry Ciccaroni. He's not too pleased with the offensive thrust here of his Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Well, eight minutes and 24 seconds left. We haven't heard anything from Schneck, although with a six to four lead, you don't have to worry about that right now. He assisted on the first goal to Jimmy Zaputo and only a minute uh, into the first quarter. But I think the tempo is going pretty well the way Hopkins wants it. Very, very controlled, breaking a lot of clears. They're getting the ball down there and selling it and running some nice plays. Carolina has run some uh, fast break and taken advantage of a few fast breaks, but not as many as they would like. I think if Carolina can stay very close in the first half, the second half will be an entirely different ball game because they will now have the experience and the jitters will be out of their system. Here we see some of the fine young uh, fans here at Palmer Stadium. What a beautiful day, probably about 85 degrees. We had an opportunity to talk to Coach Ciccaroni about a timeout and how he uses it. He just called with eight minutes and 24 seconds left. Let's see what he had to say. Well, a timeout is important uh, as far as the flow of the game is concerned. If for uh, some reason uh, Carolina jumps out and uh, we aren't playing the way we should be, then uh, we should take a timeout, try and settle our guys down, uh, go over uh, whether our riding and clearing is what we want to do, and just try and relax our guys at a timeout as uh, opposed to uh, getting all excited. Coach Henry Ciccaroni telling you about his theory in the use of timeouts. Chickaroni, a tremendous success, uh, an unparalleled record at Hopkins, 22 wins in a row right now, going for his fourth straight division championship. And down at the Carolina bench. I feel, I'm sure North Carolina feels at this point that they're in little or no danger as we see a good hard shot taken there by Henry Chickaroni. The ball popped high in the air and will go out of bounds on the far side. Jamie Allen blocked the shot. Great play by defenseman. Chickaroni loves to get it about 18, 20 yards in front, just crank it up and let it go. He can do it because Hopkins screens the crease. They'll screen the goalie on the crease as good as any team in the country, probably better. Back out front now to Chickaroni. They have only a single screen. Bill Cantelli down in front of the goal, coming back out behind the goal, Brendan Schneck. Hopkins rotating their offense from behind the goal to the front of the goal and back behind again, taking men back, midfielders back behind the goal where they don't like to play, defensive midfielders. Now back over to Harris, back out to Schneck. He'll fire from there. Now down decides not to. Good defensive sliding. It looks by like a Carolina. zone. By Carolina. It almost does look like a zone. We'll see if they rotate it. They all. are in some kind of a zone. Let's take a look at it. Look at how they're not coming out to play man to man. They're letting uh, Hopkins control it from a point far enough out that they're in no danger of scoring. Back behind the goal now to Jeff Cook along and Chickaroni will fire. He fires and Tommy 
She has snared that one easily. A beautiful outlet pass, just over the outstretched kick of Messenger. He recovers, no fast break. Now they have one, Chris Wall rolls in, looks backside, fires and scores as he beats Brian Holman. Griswold with a beautiful shot, came in, faked the feet across the other way to uh, Burnett, and then it came right back in and slipped it by Holman. A great heads up play, and this is the transition game that we're looking to come from the Tar Heels. They've got speed, they've got quickness, and let's watch it all the way through if we can pick it up from the clear. Here the clear comes down, picks up the loose ball again, and now he's looking to dish it off. Hits Griswold on the left. Griswold, watch, he'll come down, he'll fake to his right. There's a fake right there, that pulls the goalie over a minute, and he comes right back inside of Holman, bounces off Holman's stick actually, and goes right inside the pipe side. It was actually, it was hit from behind afterwards, but a great play by Griswold. Great replay there. We were able to see Griswold's fake, and Holman's just moved about two feet out when he took the fake, and that was all Griswold needed to shoot. That was it. Holman went a foot to those left, and he was unbalanced. Seven minutes left, score six to five, Johns Hopkins. Back out front now with Peter Vogel. He tries to feed inside. The ball picked off over there by one of the defensemen. I believe it's Lance Schneck. He has the ball checked away. Carolina has great speed, and they will run at you from all over the field. Be controlled there by Monty Hill. Throwing a little bit of heat on the far side from Kevin Keeper. He'll pull back and get it back out front. This time over to number four for North Carolina. And that would be Timmy Vocal, brother of Peter Vocal. Three vocals on this team for North Carolina. Vocal brothers. A lot of puns on that. They're a lot. They're really vocal. They are three of them. All good players. Timmy back out front now to number 18, Jeff Homeyer. Brother Pete, Pete feeds fun. inside. Try to get it over quickly to Johnny Shipper, but he's under some pressure. The slide comes from the crease by uh, number 36, Kevin Keeper for Johns Hopkins. Right down the pipe, they fire. Nice save uh, picked up by Brian Holman. I haven't seen a team feed the ball down the pipe. We mean down the pipe, we mean from, front of the, from out in front of the goal, closer to the goal from in front of the goal. If that makes sense to you. Uh, Carolina's doing more of that than anybody we've seen so far this season. They really do. They come across the crease, maybe about 18 yards up high. It looks like a shot almost because it comes in so fast. What's happening is a midfielder or an attackman is cutting across the crease underneath that man. He picks up the feed and then dumps it in for a, more, uh, a higher percentage shot. 5.45 remaining in the first half of the NCAA Division I Championship. Johns Hopkins 6, North Carolina 5. Here's the control offense again. Cook trying to bear in against Haas. Turns and that was a, I thought it was a shot, but it's back up nicely by Zafudo if it was, and back out to Cook. Back over to Jeff Kendall. Kendall starts his dodge. He's inside the man, good screen, fires over top of the goal. That time a nice screen set up inside by Hallie Offit. And now Offit will come out of the game. John Haas matched up against Jeff Cook, uh, the leading scorer in the country for most of the year. Just incredible statistics for Jeff Cook, and he's against, he's got uh, 46 goals and 28 assists for 74 points, leading the Hopkins team. He's against only a sophomore, and John Haas, who was the leading freshman last year, voted by the team on the Carolina Tar Heels. Back out to Zafuda. Zafuda puts it back out front now to Henry Ciccarotti, Jr. As Hopkins goes back in with their first midfield again. Over to Jeff Harris. Back to Schneck. Hopkins being very, very patient. And as the ball moves from right to left in front of the goal, the screen moves from right to left in front of the goal. Always staying between the goalie and the man with the ball. Cantelli now sliding over in front of the goalie as Jeff Harris handles it. Hopkins setting up a cut as two men cut in front of the goal. Now a nice feed and taken in there by Jimmy Zaputo. The shot saved by Sears, but still no control. And there's a good hit in there by Zaputo as he hammers number 11, and that would be Tom Federico. It was an excellent hit, but he didn't know where the ball was, and actually it could have been a foul because the ball had scooted out, and if it was five yards away, that would have been a foul. But a great play. All hits must be taken within five yards of the ball. Ready now as Carolina sets up their clear. Tommy Sears out on the right side of the goal. You see Tommy Sears in the screen now. What he's waiting for, the midfielders are changing on the fly. They're going out the midfield stripe, and the new ones are coming in, just like you're familiar in seeing with hockey. They come in, a fresh uh, group of three midfielders comes in. They're fresh, they're ready to run. And a lot of the times nowadays, most teams specialize. Their midfielders, one may be a great offensive midfield, one may be a good defensive midfield. The defensive midfield just came out for North Carolina. The offensive midfield is in play. Now Hopkins putting a little bit of pressure on on the ride. As they throw the ball back towards the defenseman, number 13, Gary Burns, and he'll give it back to Tommy Sears. Three minutes and 45 seconds left in the half, so what North Carolina wants to do is bring it down with a lot of patience, make sure they get control and get a good shot off, hopefully tie the game at halftime. Finally, they get it into Mike Burnett. And he'll settle it all down. Give it over quickly to Terry Martinello. Terry Martinello, number 34, 21, Peter Vocal on midfield for 
the Tar Heels. Burnett with the ball now, trying to create some pressure. He's got his man, Beans. He comes around the goal. Holman comes out and double teams him. But to no avail as Burnett fires it over top of Holman. Holman's double team did not dislodge the ball. And now Carolina has tied this game. Six all, 317 remaining in the first half. What a great play by Burnett. And that's a mistake on Holman. Holman, not a mistake, but a gamble. He gambled and he lost it. Let's watch Burnett. He is the leading scorer for the Tar Heels. He has a five yard lead on his defenseman. Now watch Holman come out of the goal. Holman comes out to try to stop him. He's the only one that can. Burnett takes the shove, goes with it, comes around, turns in the air, and an acrobatic 10 yard shot into an unprotected goal gives him a six to six lead. A great, or six to six tie rather, a great heads up play by Mike Burnett, the All American from the Tar Heels. Dennis again, Zoppin once again. We're gonna have a pushing, loose ball, loose ball kicking, and the ball will go over to Johns Hopkins. You can't kick the man stick out of the way to get to the ball, and that's what uh, Stenerson was called for. So we Hopkins a, will gain possession. Another great replay, and what we had, what we saw there was Holman coming out of the crease because he was the only one that could play defense on the man Burnett who had beat his defenseman. And now that we'll time see where they he lost the, the ball. It's critical as to placement of the ball. It's either cleared or it's not cleared, and they say it is not. Kendall will start to try to dash over. They're not going to pick him up. They'll let him run over the You'll midfield You'll see here, line. as soon as he gets across the midfield stripe, he's clear. There he goes. Now Hopkins has been very quiet on offense. It's about nine minutes to go on this quarter. We'll see if they can uh, reload. As they give it out front to Kendall. On the near side to Jeff Cook. And back out to Kendall. Same type of offensive style we saw moment ago when Hopkins had the ball down. Kendall now can fire from there. He beats the defenseman. He'll want to shoot. No, puts it behind. They look back and it's close. Jeff Cook roll dodges and scores. He lost the ball momentarily. Picked it up in midair and he has scored his second goal. Hopkins goes back on top. 7 to 6, 244 remaining in the half. And Lee can correct me, that's his third goal. Third goal by my statistics and they're not always right. But that's what I have down for. And let me tell you, Cook is probably, as we mentioned in the pregame, he is one of the two players on this team, or on this field, that are head and shoulders above everybody else. Watch him come in, as Bob mentioned, he'll lose the ball. Watch the ball on his stick. He comes in, makes a nice face dodge. He has a man coming up on his right. He beats him, but look, the stick's, the ball's in the air. It goes right back in his stick. I don't even think he knew it. <laughs> I don't think he, I, I don't he think never he knew the, the ball was out of his stick, and there's a little bit of luck for you. It fell right back in, and he pumped it right past Sears. You know, Sears, from five yards away, was probably keying on the ball. He probably saw the ball pop up. It was loose, and it probably just, uh, got him off the regular, you know, what am I trying to say, Bob? His regular style of movement towards the ball. As Doug, <laughs> Dougie Hall brings it down. It distracted him a lot, and that's why he missed that save. Burnett tries to shoot off the side. The ball went a little wide. Let's we'll see what they call it. A nice takedown in the back by Dave Black. He knocked uh, Kevin Griswold down outside the line. You see the players hustle for the out of bounds. What you're, what you're seeing there is when it's a shot, when it's a shot and the ball goes out of bounds, the closest player to it gets possession. Now look at Griswold coming in and getting possession while Dave Black comes in and tries to roll underneath him to get closer to the ball. Back out front, Griswold with the ball. He's under a lot of pressure. Black now finds an open man. He's got an open man, Monty Hill, on this side. They feed inside. A nice save by Holland on a point blank shot. But there's a flag down, and we'll see what we have. It's going to be a hold called against Johns Hopkins. This will be the first extra man play for North Carolina. Will it not this will be the first one. I, mean, I think we've only had two extra man plays, one for Hopkins. This will be the first for North Carolina. We'll see what kind of an extra man play they like to run. Two minutes and 12 seconds left in the in the halftime. Seven to six leads. It's a great opportunity for them to tie it up at seven seven. You know, Bob, we talk about how even these teams are statistically over the year. Their averages per game are almost dead even. Here's Willie Scroggs, coach of North Carolina. Again, he got his training at Johns Hopkins. Scroggs, an assistant coach under Henry Ciccaroni at Johns Hopkins, in his third year at North Carolina. Now back up front, Kevin Griswold gives it over to Pete Vogel, and then his side to. Number 18, Jeff Homeyer. And now they move out to a 1-4-1. One, one. A man open here, Burnett. Open and fires. He scores on the top, Ryan Holman. And that was a beautifully set up play as they set up a stack in front of the goal. Burnett rotated out of the stack, got a great feed, and shot it right over top of goalie Brian Holman. And now Carolina has tied it once again. 7 all, 150 remaining in this half. You see Michael Burnett, number three. The young man who just scored that last goal. A great play, and I'd say we'll take a look at it. This is extra man, so what you want to do is get it over to your power shot from the right-hand side. This is a, a great place to be, and Burnett just cranks up and hits that left-hand corner. When you're that close, maybe 12 yards away from Holman, and you can crank up with your fastest shot and put it where you want it, like uh, Bokel Ken, because he's an All-American, he's a great ball player. It's pretty tough to stop for Holman. 7-7 seven seven tie with a minute 47 seconds left. Right now, still no control of the faceoff. Ball picked up nicely now by Dougie Hall. Hall almost a uh, backhand feed. Now Hall rolls in, he's wide open, he'll fire. He fires it right to the stick of Brian Holman. 
133 remaining in the half. Johns Hopkins 7, North Carolina 7. A great game here for the NCAA Division I Championship. Quickly up to Dave Black. Now back to Holman. Holman doesn't want to make a mistake here with time running out in the first half in a tie ball game. Up to Brandon Schneck. Schneck has a 2-1 on the far side with defenseman Dave Black. And Black gets the pass and comes across the midfield line and tips it off to Henry Ciccaroni, Jr. With a minute left, Bob, they want to get a good shot off. We can look for it. They're going to set up a good high percentage shot, possibly even a play. And they'll try to go into the halftime with an 8-7 lead. Watch the patience, watch the control, and let's look for a play to their top people. Putting now as Schneck moves back out front. Hopkins setting up uh, a 2-3-1 offense in front of the goal. Now Jeff Cook forms an overload on the left-hand side. Schneck drives in. He's open. He'll find. He'll beat Tommy, Tommy Sears with 41 seconds remaining in the first half. Carolina falls behind again as Hopkins comes on to lead 8-7. to seven. Well, Brendan Schneck, you can't play him one-on-one -on -one all day long without any help. This is his first goal of the game, but uh, with 25 seconds left, again, we are 47 seconds, you can expect that they're going to go to their top man. Now, he comes driving in. You see the one-on-one, -on -one, and he can't play this man one-on-one. -on -one. He's too great. He comes in from about 10 yards out and just guns it by Tommy Sears, who's a great goalie. And when you got a Brendan Schneck firing at you from 10 yards out, you're going to need a little bit of help. 41 seconds remaining in this half. Hopkins on top, eight to seven. I'm real surprised that North Carolina wasn't sliding in a double team looking for Schneck to bring the ball down. You know they're gonna go to either Schneck or Cook in a pressure situation. Hoffman tries to rake it out. He's under heat from Stenderson. Stenderson picks it up. Now he's double teamed. The ball's still not under control. And now Jeff Kendall handles it. He falls down. Hopkins has possession. 30 seconds showing on the clock here. They just don't want to make any mistakes. If they get a shot, fine. But don't give Carolina a shot, and that's what Chickaroni's asking for right now. He's calling a timeout. We've seen Henry Chickaroni do this all season long. Hopkins timeout. timeout. Call a timeout with the last few seconds of a, of a quarter in order to get that scoring opportunity set up properly. Absolutely. He's got another timeout to use, and this is a great time to use it. He can set up a play now with 21 seconds. Plenty of time to get a good shot from one of his uh, top guns. And then going with a two-goal cushion. Leaf, what do you think he'll do here? Well, we just saw Schneck do his number. I would suggest maybe that he goes back to Cook and let Cook do his one-on-one. -on -one. Cook's got one, two, three goals, and uh, he's been pretty successful all day long. So why not give it to Cook, let him drive. If he has a shot, take it. If not, he can dish it off to the sliding man or to the sliding man's offensive player. Do you think that uh, Carolina will double-team Cook in this situation? I think Carolina should get back in that tight zone we saw him playing, stay a little more tight inside, and then when they get the guy coming in to a danger area, so possibly 15 yards or less, 14 yards, 13 yards, then you double team, then you play him tough. Give, give the outside shot. At halftime, Bob, I'm gonna have an opportunity to go down the field and talk to one of the greatest coaches in lacrosse, Coach Richie Moran of Cornell, an All-American player at Maryland back in, uh, I guess, before the Civil War. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Richie, love to hear that. <laughs> Uh, Richie was a great ball player at Maryland, and he has a, a fantastic record at Cornell. And uh, a colorful guy as well, and we'll have a good time talking to him at halftime, as well as some others. We're going to take a look at Jeff Cook's shot. This guy is unbelievable. Uh, when he makes this drive, this is the last one where he came around. Watch the ball now, because the ball pops out of the stick. He doesn't know it. A great face dodge there. He has to move the stick back to the left real fast because of that defenseman. The ball's in the air now. He doesn't know it. He's cradling madly. Look at it. The ball drops right back in at the right time. He's still looking at the goalie. <laughs> it goes right between Sears' legs. Sears, I think, was watching that ball float in the air, not thinking the shot was going to come. And all of a sudden, it drops back into his stick, and he gets a shot. There's the luck of the Those roll. Those kind of things happen with great players. Absolutely. They make their own breaks, but that kind of thing uh, you don't see very often, but our great replay and technical people got it for us. Brendan Schneck now comes in. It's going to be an iso and dish. He'll dish it off if he draws a double team. Ten seconds showing on the clock. Here comes Schneck. They picked up by a midfielder. Gives it on the side. Point behind. Five seconds showing on the clock. They look for Cook. It's open. He can fire from over here. He turns and shoots and bounces it off a defenseman's stick. It's going to be a lot of bands, and that'll be the end of the first half with Johns Hopkins leading North Carolina 8-7 to seven in the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment with an excellent halftime show. And there we'll see just how even a game this has been. Hopkins, of course, leading 8-7, to seven, as we mentioned. Shots, Carolina getting a few more, and Hopkins making a few more saves. The faceoffs are in the favor of North Carolina, 9 to 8. Clearing percentage, about the same. Hopkins shooting a little better, 38%, than uh, North Carolina, only 27%. We're just about set for the opening faceoff of the second half. The referee puts the ball down, backs out. Stenerson tries to run over. Howie Hoppin with a nice pickup right off the top of the grass. Back to Lance Schneck, and Schneck will get it back to Brian Holman. 
And now back to Schneck as Hopkins sets up. They're clear. Not too much pressure at this point from Carolina on the ride. Griswold chasing around behind. That's not going to create any problems for Johns Hopkins in clearing the ball. Now Schneck has a two and one on the far side of the field. Looks down and instead comes back over this way to Chickaroni. And Chickaroni will clear the ball easily. Give it over quickly to Offit. And Offit will put the ball back to Jimmy Zaputo. Johns Hopkins not having a lot of trouble clearing the ball here. Since they rearranged their clear early in the game, they had muffed a couple of clears mainly from bad passing. But right now they've settled down and they're clearing the ball with a great deal of speed. Schneck calls Chickaroni to him. And Schneck will set up the isolation top of the box. Looking right at Timmy Vocal. Now gives it over to Chickaroni. Chickaroni back to Schneck. Now Schneck starts his move. He's open. He can shoot from there. And he fires. And a nice save by Tommy Sears. And he almost loses it. That'll be an interference call going against uh, the crease attackman. We believe Jeff Harris. Once the goalie has possession of the ball, he cannot hit his stick as long as he remains in the crease area. And we'll see it coming up again as Leaf rejoins us. I feel like I just ran midfield for Hopkins. I'm tired. Here we go. Sears with a great save. Coming right up in front, keeping his eye on the ball. Staying it way high in there. Now watch how he gets it back and almost scores on himself. He brings it back into the crease for protection. There's the interference. As the stick comes in, hits him on watch. The ball's loose, almost goes into the net. Wouldn't have counted, however, of course, because the interference had been called. Nice clearing pass over to Gary Burns. Burns looks back, calls for a midfielder, and finds him coming across the middle. And a nice check inside there by Walt Carswell as he nails Dougie Hall, and Hopkins gets the ball back. Sort of a clothesline move when Dougie Hall, almost a penalty, I thought, as he came through, but a good, clean play. Referees being very close and uh, calling it proper. Jeff Cook now uh, could have had an isolation against a midfielder, but he allowed for a substitution on the fly, and that allowed North Carolina to switch up and get a defenseman on him. Defenseman number 37, Johnny Haas. And he'll watch as Cook goes all the way out to the far side to set up an ISO. 8-7, to seven, Bob, in this game is everything we thought it would be. Both teams averaging 17 goals every game they play, and uh, they're almost hitting that right now, 8-7 to seven ahead. Cook gets double teamed and whacked really hard by Jamie Allen, but he has the ball. Inside P, now picked up nicely by one of the midfielders for North Carolina. They get it over to Jamie Allen. He gets it up quickly to Peter Vocal. And Vocal legs it across the midfield line, and Carolina clears. Neither team having too much trouble clearing the ball since the early problems Hopkins had in the first quarter. They're not. You heard uh, before the game, Coach Henry Chickaroni mentioned that he wants to play six on six with these guys, not lose any goals by midfield play. He doesn't want to overplay them there and get beat with speed to the goal. So he feels he can beat him six on six, and that's just what he's trying to do. Burnett tries to run by Lance Schneck. He beat Schneck earlier. He's got him beat again. Turns and fires a nice save. It's going to be a hold as Schneck was laying his stick across the neck. And we see a slashing call coming up against Schneck. And so uh, Carolina will be extra for one minute. You see a close-up of uh, Grizz, or no, that's Monty, Monty Hill, Hill coming off Monty Hill. And here's the drive coming around the right side. You will see the hold as he comes in real tight. He wants to cut off the glove side, the stick side, to turn him back. Being double teamed, the Burnett shot over the shoulder, and Holman with a beautiful save, playing position all the way. These days, you can't wait for the guy to turn to shoot. He may shoot. Any good attackman can shoot at any time, like Burnett, Barnett did just there. Extra man situation for North Carolina. Top of the box on the extra man, David Wingate, number 19, the son of uh, Elmer Wingate, who we spoke with at halftime. Back out to Griswold. Carolina at a 2-3-1, a little bit of pressure on the wings. Now they slide down to a 1-4-1. Peter Vocal looking out for some help, finds it in Burnett. Burnett's going to dodge. Now puts it back behind Imani Hill. Burnett once again wants to dodge. Picked up by Dave Black. Back out to Peter Vocal. And I'm not quite sure what they're trying to affect. Now they get the backside feed. The shot taken out there. Knocked down nicely by Dave Black. But right back in the stick of Peter Vocal. Vocal under some heat. He gives it off out front. And a shot knocked down again by one of the defensemen. That shot taken by Terry Martinella. The ball still going loose. The throw of the stick of one of the defensemen of Hopkins. Picked up by Burnett. Great stick work, great speed here. That'll be a hold coming up as Burnett comes around, and he is sandwiched. He's hit there by Joe Saletti and Dave Black, and I think he needed a rest. He pats Joe Saletti on the leg, says, nice hit, but we'll see what that call is. It will definitely be a hold, and Hopkins will be down another man. A lot of hustle by Burnett, but you're going to see hustle doesn't make a good extra man play. I don't understand extra man. They're not moving the ball very well in the air. Burnett hustles back and gets the ball from out of bounds. Here's the first hold call right across the neck, but Burnett puts the ball way high and keeps control. And watch the double team come in and sandwich Burnett with a good hard hit right here. Boom! And that ball went rejected right out of bounds, took away his shot, and sets up North Carolina with a two-man advantage. You'll see the defense set up in a box, a four-pointed box. 11-25 remaining in the third quarter. Hopkins leading Carolina 8-7, to 
And Carolina, though, with the two-man advantage here. There's a good shot, Bob, of the box. You see the four defensemen standing in a square in front of the goal. They'll let, them take, they'll let the offense take the outside shot. They want to keep any shots from, say, 12 yards or closer away from their goalie. Now Lance Schneck comes in, so Hopkins is only down a man. The first penalty has expired as they put the ball back to Burnett. Burnett is opening, come around. He wants to feed inside, and a nice move in there by Joe Saletti as he knocked down the pass. And a long outlet pass up towards the goal. And offside will be Jeff Harris. As he's good there by Jamie Allen. A good alert play by Jamie Allen as he pushed Harris off sides. And Carolina will be gained possession. Good call by the referee. He was right on the line. We'll see it on our monitor. Take a look. Here he is. He's dancing. Harris is dancing down the line. Amy with a little shove. And he walks right over about six inches to the other side. The referee right on the play. Ball goes back to North Carolina. Now both penalties are over. And a hard shot taken there by Timmy Vogel. Excuse me, Peter Vogel. Snared there by Brian Holman. He lobs the pass back over to the near side to Lance Schneck. Bob, I have to say that was a disappointing extra man offensive series. There wasn't Certainly much was. ball movement. They looked like they were playing a regular offense against a man down defense. Now Hopkins goes back on offense. The ball is cleared by Joe Saletti. He gets it back over on the far side to Brendan Schneck. He holds it momentarily while Saletti comes out of the game. And offensive threat, Henry Chicaroni Jr. comes in. Again, this is more of that specialization that you see so many for so many teams doing in lacrosse. Here's an offensive situation, so they bring in the offensive midfield. And in this case, it's Brendan Schneck leading it. Brendan's now going to go back to an isolation as he pulls far out in front of the goal. He's Hopkins sets up a two-man screen down inside. They've got so Cantelli down. Actually, three men now. Cantelli, Cook, and another midfielder. Schneck is knocked down, loses the ball, tries to recover. But there's a man on a dead run, picking up the ball, number 34, Terry Martinello. Quick side, lead inside, and they've got a fast break, and they score. They Carolina scores. David Wingate has his first goal of the game, and that's Carolina lacrosse. Johns Hopkins now is tied with North Carolina. Eight all, 9.50 remaining in the third quarter. Beautiful play by Terry Martinello. They really double teamed Brendan Schneck this time. No way he was going to the cooker by himself. All the way up there on their offensive half of the field for Hopkins. Double teamed Schneck, got the ball on the ground. Martinello picked it up. Here he is coming down. He's looking for the feed. He sees Wingate about 20 yards ahead. He feeds it to Wingate, who was one-on-one -on -one with Holman. Wingate makes a nifty little move. He fakes, watch the fake here. He doesn't fake, I'm sorry, he doesn't fake, but he goes right to the far side of the pipe, left-hand corner. Nice, beautiful play on a fast break situation. That is Carolina lacrosse, and it's a tie ball game with nine minutes and 50 seconds left. Missing off once again, Stetterson for Carolina and Hallie Offit for Johns Hopkins. Uh, picked up by Jeff Kendall. Kendall loses it as they go over his head, knock it away. Here comes Mike Burnett. Burnett with a man breaking down inside. Monty Hill does not see Monty Hill, so he takes the ball back out. Hill had broken underneath his defenseman on the far side. Now over to Peter Vocal. Excuse me, not Peter Vocal's number 11, Tom Federico. And he's in a little bit of trouble as he loses the ball. Looked up nicely there by David Black. Devin Keeper, Devin Keeper across the midfield line. Has a fast break. Looks inside. He'll probably give it off to Harris. Harris far side to Cook. And Cook has the ball either knocked away or lost it. We'll see. It's going to go over to North Carolina as the ball just got away from Jeff Cook or Jeff Harris. It was knocked down by John House. John House had a beautiful, it was a fast break situation. That long defensive stick. House read it beautifully, knocked it down, and now it goes. They're calling it uh, North Carolina ball. Well, Jeff Cook protesting that it was knocked down by one of the defensemen, but the actually, referee down there did that's not That's the read way it. I saw it. The defenseman, John House, put a stick on it, or else Cook would have had an open shot on the net. He deflected that ball, went out of bounds. Referee sees it. Here's Chicaroni calling and trying to get his troops set up for the clear. Now they give it over to Tommy Sears. Henry Chicaroni Jr. of Johns Hopkins. Now we'll see what this, it'll be a delay. And that'll be a technical foul. We'll see who that goes against. It probably will go against Hopkins. We're not quite sure why. It should go against Hopkins. I see Coach Willie Scroggs talking to his offense, his extra man people. He needs a goal here. He wants one badly. He's sending him in. In the extra man situation, you send in your six best offensive players, and they try to move that ball to get the defense who is a man down to get one slide behind the ball, in which case you'll have uh, a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. That's what just surprised us last time because Carolina was not moving the ball in the air. They were working one side of the crease, one side of the goal, back and forth, back and forth, sort of like a regular situation. Let's see what they do now in this extra man situation. They'll be extra six on five for 30 seconds. Back out front to Martinello. Now over the far side to Kevin Griswold. Well, dances around back to Burnett. Burnett over to Vocal. Now they've, they've moved down into a 1-4-1. They feed inside tightly. That's the shot they've been trying to get. Now Vocal picks it up. Looks on the inside feed. A nice shot. Looks there by Mike Burnett. He's got a beautiful feed. Looks like they're trying to work the wings and get the shots from the wings lead. 
That was backed up over there by... They really are. That's a very tough feet across the crease, but they got away with it. Now, Barnett stepped in the crease, and I think that's the call. Watch Vocal come down. He sees Barnett across the crease. He's out of... He can't make a shot here. He's behind the goal. He feeds over to Vocal. Vocal's right there. He's a nice play behind by, uh, by the Hopkins defenseman, and Barnett put it too far above the goal. But again, it, it's, it's kind of like a hit and hit hit or miss situation on extra man. Extra man is normally a very well designed play that you go for a good shot. Griswold tries to go over the head of Joe Saletti. Does not do it. Saletti's going to clear the ball easily. Once he gets to the box, the penalty will be over. They put it inside. That's the end of the penalty. And now everybody is all even. <laughs> and now as Jeff Kendall holds the ball momentarily. Oh, Hopkins substitutes the defenseman. Back on the far side now with Peter Scott. Peter Scott was nursing an injury up till a couple of weeks ago, a pulled hamstring. Still playing with a bandage as of last week, but now appears to be 100%. Good ball player, 14 goals, six assists on the year, and that's uh, not playing too many games. Back over now, Cook trying to roll back inside again. Draws a lot of heat when he has the ball. Can't give it off to Scott. Now he's coming back out front. Feeds into the crease, the ball knocked down. Here comes Saletti. He shoots because he's being nailed. The ball backed up nicely on the backside by number 31, Pete Scott. Well, you mentioned he was nailed. He really was, Bob. Anytime you get within that crease area, five yards on the crease, the, you, watch, your coach wants you to wipe out the man on the crease. You don't, he's dangerous right here. So watch, he gets conversion on by two or three players. All, everybody on the crease, look at the white jerseys. They get that man out of there because he's too dangerous. Shot taken by Zaputo. Nice save by Sears, but does not control. Zaputo gets the ball back. Carolina has their long sticks midfield in, which means they're playing with like, like one, two, three, four, five defensemen and one midfielder. Number 10, Johnny Basil, the man with the short stick. He's the midfielder. They hope they can utilize in clearing the ball should Sears make the save. A quick feed inside. The shot taken over there by Saletti. And we have two Hopkins men running out of bounds. Jeff Cook will get possession. Bob, we haven't talked to Coach Scroggs about this, but we had noticed it in the first half. They are in sort of a, a semi-zone. With these long six, they play a very tight sort of a zone situation. We don't know exactly how the rotation goes. They'll pressure the ball a little bit, but they don't go out and play it tough. And they slide tightly again from that zone. Watch how the players play it, almost like a basketball zone. Back out front now to Brennan Schneck. Here you see the Hopkins players cool, getting cooled down because it's a very, very hot and humid day here at Palmer Stadium. Schneck comes in with his ISO, tries to feed underneath, gets into Zafudo, and a nice slide in there by number 12, Jamie Allen. Checks the ball away, and Sears runs it out of bounds, and Carolina will gain possession. That's that zone defense play by Tommy Sears. Zone defense. Jamie Allen was above the play. He was in the midfield, but what happens is in the zone, you can slide across with only about a five, six-yard slide, whereas normally you're pulled out about a ten yards away. He came back and saved that, uh, saved that shot from being a good shot, but watch Tommy Sears as he gets out of the goal and races this ball to the sideline and gets it back for Carolina. You see him coming to the picture right here. There he is, Peter Scott to the sideline with a shot. He's closest to the ball. His team gets it. Six. 6.45 remaining in the third quarter. Johns Hopkins 8, North Carolina 8. Of course, the coach, the winning coach today will be named as one of the three coaches to coach the USA team in the 1982 World Games. Nice hit there as one of the defensemen gets tied up under 37. Johnny Hoss gets tied up for Carolina. No fast break as everybody's back in the hole very nicely. Good move inside, but Jeff Cook, he rolls in, fires and gets the ball inside past Tommy Sears. And Jeff Cook has put on some performance here today as he has his fourth goal, all in a great effort. Cook is unbelievable. When they say go to the cooker, I think they named it after this man right here. He is absolutely too much. This is the second time he has gone and gotten a penalty on the way to scoring a goal today. Now watch him come in, power move against Vocal. He beats him there with an inside roll. The defenseman's out of position. Here's another defenseman sliding over, but it's too late. As Cook dives in, look, he's into the crease, but it's too late because the ball was in the net, and that goal counts. And it's 9-8, to eight, Johns Hopkins, thanks to Cook. One, two, three, his fourth goal of the game. He could have had five had the time not elapsed in the first quarter, and it was not counted. 6-17 remaining in the third quarter. Johns Hopkins, nine, Carolina, eight. And we're waiting now for all the substitutions to be made. Let me get started for the faceoff. Bob, you know, we talked about two guys having the potential to dominate a game. We mentioned Cook and Schneck, and Cook is doing it right now. The scary thing, if I was a North Carolina rooter, would be that Schneck, we haven't heard from yet, and any time he can explode. He showed that in the playoffs, but he scored three goals very quickly to power Hopkins to a semifinal victory over Virginia. Here comes Jeff Kendall. Kendall over to Harris. Harris over to Zafudo. And Zafudo picked up nicely over there by Jamie Allen. Throws the ball back, back out. Excuse me, Gary Burns puts the ball back out front. 
And Schneck, he'll fire from there if you let him. He tries to shoot high. Tommy Sears picks that one off nicely. Has the quick outlet pass to Roy Messenger. Messenger's not going to be able to handle it, however. And Hopkins has hit the ball back. Sears looks like he wants to get that outlet pass every time he gets it. And he looks for a defensive breaking out to the side. A, a good goalie does. We're going to take a look at a shot down here. This is the one. Watch Schneck come in. He, he wants that shot. He gets it within 19 yards. about 19 yards out, and that's a heck of a long way. No screen. You can see a great shot right there. With no screen, that's picking cherries for a goalie. He can just sight that thing all the way in, and it's a very easy save. Hopkins is the best team in the country. He's making screens. That time, they didn't have it. Easy save for the goalie. Carolina now down as a result of a holding call, and they're down a man. We'll see what kind of an offense uh, Hopkins runs. They're out in the one for one The shot will come to the wing. Chicken running Jr. looks inside, dodges twice. Nice save by Tommy Sears. As one of the defensive picks the ball towards the midfield line, it'll be run down there by Brendan Schneck. Great body save by uh, Sears. There comes Mike Donnelly. Donnelly rolls inside. Another save by Tommy Sears. The shot hits him in the feet. Sears now in a little bit of trouble. Gets the ball back to one of the defensemen. And he goes up to Vocal. Here comes Vocal. Vocal sort of uh, cherry picking hanging up near the midfield line. And they have the ball cleared across the midfield, off the top of the box rather. And Carolina goes back all even now against Johns Hopkins. Hopkins is over three, Bob, on extra man offense. And we talked before the game to some of the, to the two coaches, and they felt this is a very critical area. Any close game, it's a critical area. The extra man situations, you must take advantage of them. Griswold tries to feed on a cutter inside, number 18. That would be Jeff Homeyer. The ball does not get through. And now a quick outlet pass to Craig Cook. Cook wheels it across the midfield line. Craig, the older brother of Jeff, gets it back to Jeff, and Craig will come out of the game as he was in on extra man offense. Jeff will hold the ball, waiting for Hopkins to substitute on the fly. See all the Hopkins coaches on the sideline. There's Jeff Cook, leading scorer on the Hopkins team. 46 goals, 28 assists. Tremendous ball player. This guy is dominating this game, scoring three, four times, all unassisted. Putting now midfield in the game for Johns Hopkins. 11, Jeff Kendall, 12, Joe Saletti, and 28, Mike McGee. Cook now is going to try Haas again. Beats Haas in the front of the goal. is open. Fires and scores. It's a goal. Jeff Cook has been awesome. Hopkins now leads North Carolina 10 to 8, 4 0 1, remaining in the third quarter. How many times can you say it? This guy is just taking charge. He's doing it all, and he's doing it all unassisted. His fifth goal, H1, has been unassisted. This is true Hopkins style, and this guy's a guy that does it better than anybody. Watch him come in. He wants to be the Haas sophomore, 1 on 1. Here he goes. Haas needs help. He's not getting it. Cook gets a position. He comes in for the left handed shot. The ball is still in possession, and Sears doesn't read it over the shoulder for a high score. I never, never beat the pipe. Only four minutes left in a two goal lead, thanks to Jeff Cook. With, yeah, again, four minutes left in one second in the third quarter. Ready now for the face off. Hop doesn't get it clean. The ball laying there and almost picked up. Now picked up by Stenerson. He loses it, but it uh, bounces right from the stick of one of the Carolina midfielders. They have a fast break set up as a virtue of the pass. And a shot taken inside wide of the goal by Mike Burnett. That pass made it a fast break, even though there wasn't uh, you know, really one there. Absolutely, and the North Carolina players love to shoot that ball. You'll notice on the fast breaks, they don't back up as well. Many times they've taken shots that missed the goal. Hopkins gets the ball back. Hopkins backs up beautifully. Here, uh, Holman raced back, and there was no North Carolina player back there. They all want to get the shot on goal. They have so much uh, firepower. They got the firepower. They also have confidence that they're going to get that shot and put it in the net. Here comes Kendall again, as he's cleared the ball so well. Kendall and Saletti have done a yeoman job in clearing the ball up the near sideline all day long. They've made it look easy, too easy. Back to Saputo. Saputo picked up by Messenger. Good shot from behind the goals. He watched Saputo come around. Messenger pushing him out a little bit. Now Saputo pulls out and gives it off to Jeff Cook. We'll see what Cook looks at as he comes around the goal. Good speed, good move, rolling around, looking for a double team. Rolls it by the goal, almost scoring. He's got a penalty. Excellent move. We'll see what it is. It'll be a holding call. Uh, that's about all you can do to keep Jeff Cook from going through the goal. Well, you can see with that great camera work we had from behind the goal, he was double teamed, triple teamed that time, but it didn't make much difference. That time he used a shovel, little shovel pass. He came around, a shovel shot, as a matter of fact. We're going to take a look at the hole, but watch the shot by Cook. He knows he's going to get double teamed, so he just kind of shovels the ball real low. Watch him just shovel it down real low underneath. Here's the holding right there. That's a hole. Here comes the double team. He has nothing else to do with that hold except just kind of like shove that ball and scoop it underneath. It was wide of the goal, although it looks like Sears had a good beat on it. But now another extra man situation. Coach Henry Chimroni, hoping that he could do a little better on extra man offense this time than he's been doing in the prior three opportunities. 
Cook has four out. of the last five goals for Hopkins. Inside feed, Donnelly's got it, fires. Mike Donnelly, one of the real fine shooters, young man from Canada, fires that over Tommy Sears' shoulder. And once again, for the second time this game, Hopkins has a three goal lead. They now lead Carolina 11 to 8. 304 remaining in the third quarter. Donnelly was a top high school box lacrosse player from Ontario. And now watch this, he does have a great shot. He gets in that right handed shot, he lines it up, he looks for that right handed corner, and boom, he finds it. Sears. Thinking he had it right all the way, but when you have a player like Donnelly with his ability and the, and the chance for him to crank up and put it where he wants, more often than not, he's going to score. That's the first score out of four attempts for the Johns Hopkins extra man offense. Stenerson with a nice pickup on the loose ball. Gives it off to Huggy Hall. Hall rolls in, doesn't find a shot. Now he takes it and shoots and scores. And that was some shot. Doug Hall from about 19 yards away fired it right over Brian Holman's right shoulder. And Carolina now moves back to within two. Hopkins leads North Carolina 11 to 9, 252 remaining in the third quarter. This only took 12 seconds for North Carolina to get a little fired up and come down. That shows you how important the faceoff is. They got the faceoff. Doug Hall comes down. Again, he's a converted attackman. He was an attackman last year. He knows how to shoot that ball. Watch him come in. He's not picked up. He says, hey, I've got a shot. That's 15 yards out. Right up in the upper left-hand corner as you're looking at it. A beautiful shot against Holman. And right now, they're back within two. A good place to be with two minutes and 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Bob? You see, it went offsides. I think it's going to be North Carolina offsides. They moved before the whistle blew from the wing area. And Hopkins will gain possession. And that's uh, kind of a painful penalty because Stenerson had gotten control of the ball for North Carolina. There you see, 2.51 remaining in the third quarter. North Carolina trailing Johns Hopkins 11-9. Jeff Kendall, the great player for uh, transfer junior for Johns Hopkins. Kendall picked up by Dougie Hall. He's going to try to run right by Hall, which he does. And looks and he fires. A nice save by Sears. Sears with a good kick out like past to Pete Boker. This is what Carolina likes to do. Carolina coming down six on five. With five, trying to find the open man. Boker rolls inside, pushes off, turns, feeds in. Burnett, oh, Bonnie Hill, rather. Instead of shooting, Bonnie Hill was going to try to hit Kevin Griswold. And Griswold was not expecting the pass. And therefore, they unbelievable. The ball. This is unbelievable. Monty Hill, you talk about this is a great example of overpassing. Monty Hill is right in front of the goal, and he passes it up and throws it behind the goal. He misread it all the way. Look at Hill. Look at Hill. He's right in front of the goal. It should have been an easy one to put him only one back, but he throws it behind the goal. That's what they love to do. They love to pass, but there's a perfect example, again, of overpassing, and it cost him a goal. Now, Brian Holman looks at the zone right of Carolina, gives it over to Brandon Schneck, and once again, Carolina concedes the clear. This time, Schneck's 40 yards from the midline. They, Carolina drops back in and concedes the clear. And I don't understand that. I don't understand that either. They're, I've never seen a clear given away so easily. But he now, as Schneck will try to get the offense going here for Hopkins. Hopkins leading 11 to 9 over North Carolina. 2:05 remaining in the third quarter of the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship. Back out now to Jim Zafudo. Nice as Hopkins runs their splits offense. Back over to Schneck. Schneck this time being picked up at number 35, Randy Cox. Cox lays a little stick on him and they give it over to Tommy Sears with an easy shot. Another quick out like this. This time he's scared though by Bill Cantilli. And Hopkins will look for the fast break. They set it inside. Knocked down. Now they try to throw the ball. Carolina tries to throw the ball back up towards the midfield line to get back into their transition game. We'll see what the call is. It's one of the official runners run down by Kevin Griswold. Well, we'll go back over to Johns Hopkins. Tough call to make. There was good hustle by both teams that the ball came out to the midfield strike. You see a goalie, any good goalie, and of course these two are the best in the business. Sears makes a save. The first thing he does is look upfield to hit a cutting midi to go back to get that fast break going the other way. That time it was picked off by Cantelli and brought back down for Hopkins. Ryan Holman over to Lance Schneck. Schneck is wide open coming down. The big defenseman gives it off behind to Jeff Cook. Cook has had all of, all of the best against Johnny Hawes today. Johnny Hawes, the defenseman for Carolina, number 37. Now back out to Brendan Schneck. Schneck's been very, very patient. Hopkins settles in, puts two men down on the crease. They set a nice screen. Zaputo will probably come back out front. He fires a shot wide of the goal on the right-hand side. The screen was not in the way of the shot. It was backed up over there by Jeff Cook. So again, One minute remaining in the third quarter of the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship. Johns Hopkins leading 11 to nine. With Bob Smith along with Lee Felsmo with you today. Here comes Schneck, wants to fire. He'd rather have his right hand, comes in, he's open. Turns, now puts it back to Cook. Back out front. Here's Schneck firing, and passes it to the little wide to the right-hand side. It looks to me like 
Carolina is not sliding as fast as they were early in the game. They're not. They're playing that kind of zone. I guess we don't know the exact. But here's Coach Henry Chicarona. He's yelling out some sort of offensive instructions. He wants to get a better shot. He knows they're in a little bit of a semi zone. He wants to work some sort of perimeter game to get the good hard shot from up top. Time winding down here in the third quarter. 30 seconds remaining. Coach Henry Chicarone, his son, number 18, excellent ball player, loves the shot from up top. Here comes Chick. Comes back late. He can shoot with either hand, left or right. Over to Zaputo, quick feet inside to Cantelli. Back behind the goal to Jeff Cook. Here comes Cook in his roll dodge, and he's triple team this time. They said, you will not pass this time for sure. The ball the knocked Carolina's out of over eagerness, taking the ball out of bounds. He was double, triple team. Sears came out of the goal. They're psyched, they're happy. Or maybe they're yelling at each other, I don't know. But anyway, they <laughs> came out and they kicked that ball out and the ball went back to Hopkins. It wasn't a shot, so this time, if you kick it out, you lose it. Brandon Schneck now feeds inside, quickly the ball knocked down. And can't tell he knocks it in. Can't tell he knocks it in the field. say no goal, no goal. Both referees down on the plane of the goal had ruled no goal. Once again, Hopkins loses the goal because time ran out. And this time, the end of the third quarter, all right, the we'll second see time. what happens here. Second time we can show it to you. We show you Cantelli, who has seven goals in the season with two assists. He's a little bit upset about that because he made a beautiful heads-up play. He was on the crease where he should be, and he scooped that thing in. A cook comes in. He didn't get the shot. He was double triple team. Now watch. Right there. Cantelli to the right of your screen, right to the right of goal. Hit it in, batted it in like a baseball bat, but no, to no avail because uh, the time had run out. 11 to 9. We'll be back in a minute with the fourth quarter of this exciting game. This is it, Bob, the fourth quarter. And you know, we've seen some extra man situations here that haven't worked out to the benefit of the extra man team. We, we asked Coach Henry Ciccaroni just how critical the extra man situations were going to be today. Well, the man up and man down situation, uh, I think, is very critical. Uh, both teams have very good offensive uh, personnel in the man up situation, and it could be a deciding factor in this game. There you heard from Coach Henry Ciccaroni as we have the opening face off. Still not controlled to begin the fourth quarter of this championship game. Now the ball rolling back. We'll have a loose ball push call probably. We'll see. It will be an illegal procedure. And the ball will go over to North Carolina. That gives Hopkins an opportunity to get their long sticks defense in. 21, Kevin Kilner. 45, Marty Bergen. And 44, Walton Carswell. We see a great shot of this outstanding crowd here today at Palmer Stadium. I guess the term you use with this stadium is venerable, right, Lee? Yes. The term I use. Now Mike Burnett trying to get past Lance Neck fires. And scores with a backhand shot that had Brian Holman totally fooled. And now Carolina cuts the lead to one. Hopkins leading North Carolina 11 to 9 with 14 42 remaining in the fourth quarter. It only took them eight seconds to get on track. This is the last quarter. This is the quarter they have to do it. And Barnett's the big gun. Watch him come in here. Another great shot that shows you how great the players are these days. Fantastic shot behind the back. Watch Burnett. He whips it around. Reverse pivot with the stick, and it comes in right underneath of Holman. Holman's tough to read when a player shoots with his back turned to you. And that's what Burnett did to get the North Carolina Tar Heels back to within one goal, 12 seconds. Beautiful pick up there by Pete Vogel on that faceoff. He rolled in. And we're going to have a moving pick called against Fenerson, however. And all the effort on Vogel's part goes for naught as Fenerson was shielding off Jeff Kendall more than five yards from the ball. And therefore, Johns Hopkins will gain possession. Well, North Carolina coach Scroggs has to be uh, tremendously happy that 12 seconds into the fourth quarter, they cut the margin to one. That means you've got uh, 14 whole minutes to get this game on an even-up situation, and hopefully their speed and quickness and the little bit more depth, or the, the, the greater depth they have at midfield, can take advantage of Hopkins' superior one-on-one -on -one ability with Cook and Schneck. Running now as Hopkins brings the ball down on offense. Schneck wants it. Because of Brendan Schneck. Schneck and Cook are going to be the guys they're going to go to. That's you see, for sure. You saw Schneck wave off Henry Ciccaroni, wave him in deep. Here they're setting up. They're probably setting up in isolation him up front, and he'll come in. If he gets a shot, he'll take it. If not, he'll dish it to the wing. Watch him. He'll either dish it to Cook or Ciccaroni. Good defense being played there by number 35, Randy Cox for North Carolina. Hopkins content to work for the real good shot. Here comes Jeff Cook. The double team's already set up as Cook tries to run back into it. Outside is Schneck. Schneck will fire from in there if he can get loose, but he falls down, and Randy Cox manhandles him, picks up the loose ball, and completes the deal as he goes across the midfield line and clears it. Still has control. Now loses it as Lance Schneck is on top of it. Schneck under a lot of pressure there from number 11, Tom Federico, but they give it back to Kevin Kiefer, 
And the keeper will give it all over on the far side to Dave Black. That's a shame because Randy Cox made a great play. He's only a freshman, but at six foot on, one, 195, made a great play, bring it down. Should have passed the ball off when he got across the midfield straight, Bob. The attackman kind of hung uh, in, their, in one position there, not helping out much. Here comes Brennan Schneck. Burnett gives him a little whack, loses the stick, but doesn't matter. Chickaroni's open to fire from there. If he comes in, they try to feed it inside. Then a beautiful save by Tommy Sears on a point blank shot by Jim Zaputo. That could be a great save. That could be un unbelievable save by Sears. That could be a critical in the game. They would have given him a two goal lead with 13 minutes left, but a great read on Sears. That's going to be a pushing call going against Bill Cantelli. And now he gets to see. From the rear, it's a one-minute penalty. It'll be from the rear, and Carolina will be extra for one minute. Let's take a look at the Zaputo, sideline here. Saw, there you see Zaputo climbing right up the back of number 32. That's John Herbert, a defenseman for North Carolina. And then he falls over. That insult to injury. The pushing wasn't enough. He was going for the head. <laughs> wasn't going for the head. He was going for the ball, and it was a great defensive play by uh, both players. The penalty will give North Carolina an extra man situation. We heard Coach Scroggs talk about how important uh, the extra man's going to be in this game. And they now uh, give it off to Griswold. Well, Carolina sets up in a 3-3. Everybody out in front of the goal. And they'll probably cut out of that as Boca comes on his sweep over to Griswold. Now they send a man, Mike Burnett, back behind the goal. Brian Holman calling out the area of the field in which the ball is located so his defenseman can read it. Back inside. The shot taken wide of the goal. A uh, real hummer by Jeff Homeyer. Homeyer fired that just to the right side of the goal. Homeyer loves to shoot it too. He's got 19, or he's got 23 goals and five assists on the year, and he's a midfielder. Burnett back out to Homeyer. They're trying to get a good shot in off the wing here. That's why they continue to work it out to Homeyer. Feet inside underneath. As a man cutting in underneath there, number 19, that would be Dave Wingate, does not get the feed. They lose the ball. And now Lance Schneck gets it back to Brian Holman. There's the quick outlet pass to Hatch Franklin. He's in a little bit of trouble. They kick the ball. But perfectly legal. No problem with kicking the ball with your foot. A very alert move there, but now Carolina trying to force the ball into the crease is having it knocked away from him time and time again, but we controlled by number 34, Terry Martinello. Carolina's one. See, one he's all over now as Hopkins comes back in. The shot taken there will go off the foot of one of the defensemen and will really run out of bounds and alertly Marty goes Bergen. back to number 13. Goes back to number 13 for 13 North is Carolina, Gary, Burns. Gary Burns. But uh, Marty Bergen took that shot uh, right in the body, kicked it right back out, and went about 50 yards behind him. The extra man for North Carolina is terribly disappointing. I can't believe they're not getting any good cuts, not getting any good shots, and they have no qualms whatsoever about feeding the crease on that extra man situation. They're one for Another five on the day on extra man. Ball picked up by Lance Schneck over to Kevin Kilner. Kilner will clear the ball easily across the midfield line as North Carolina drops back in to play defense. Now we're seeing North or Hopkins making a change on the fly. That midfield unit's coming out. They're putting some offensive ball players in. Kilner heads up the defensive middies. They call them the rope unit on the Johns Hopkins team. And, uh, <coughs> named after the old rope dope Henry Chikamani with the ball. As uh, they get Jimmy Zaputo back in the game. Zaputo comes back in by virtue of the penalty being expired. Having expired. Back to Jeff Cook. Cook and number 37, Johnny House. They haven't tried to take House on a trip around the goal. Hopkins getting very, very wide now, pulling all the way out 20 yards in front of the goal, trying to pull Carolina out of that zone defense, and it looks like they've done it fairly successfully. Well, now House all alone, nobody to help him as Cook rolls back in towards the goal. Back over to Jeff Harris. Harris picked up there by Jamie Allen. We talked about their power style of Johns Hopkins. They have eight goals today, according to my stats, that are unassisted, which means they're going one-on-one, -on -one, looking for that bull move and a good shot from out front, and they've got the cannons to make it work. Here comes Chick Jr. Looks inside, does not draw anybody. They give it off to Cantelli. Cantelli back over to Cook. Hopkins, of course, not stalling here. But the rule we're governing, st governing stalling is a judgment rule by the official. He thinks you're stalling. He will tell you, you must go to the goal. He will tell the defense, he must play you. And if you don't do that, you'll lose possession of the ball. If those two things do not occur, the team of the ball will lose possession. Just saw a great play by Jamie Allen, who slid over to pick up Brendan Schneck, who is driving the left side of the pipe. You'll see Brendan Schneck drive the pipe. Now watch this. Now watch Jamie Allen, number 12, come and give help. Number 12 comes right into your screen. There he is. He double teams on Schneck, and he flips that ball out of bounds. Schneck goes back, dies, but he's a little bit too late. The ball goes to North Carolina. Great play by Jamie Allen. 10 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this ball game. Johns Hopkins 11, North Carolina 10. 
as we see Tommy Sears bringing up every clear, very critical at this point in the game. And Carolina certainly does not want to throw the ball away as so we did him a few moments ago on the clear. Now one of the defensemen, there are a lot of heat. They're not getting the pass off, and that's the problem. The defensemen, once they come down to attack into the field, they get a tremendous amount of pressure from the Hopkins defense, and they can't find anybody to throw the ball to. Absolutely, they've got to hit that. The attack has to come up and help out, and they've got to get that second pass to make it a success. Now Dave Black with the ball. Bounces it back to Brian Holman. Up to Kevin Kilner. Kilner looks up and he cannot find it open, so he put it back towards their own goal again. Watch the patience that Hopkins uses its textbook, Bob. And again, we talked about North Carolina's inability to bring it up. They'll make 60% of a good clear, but against Hopkins, if you don't do it 100% right, you're not going to be successful. Here's the 2 one one up to Dave Black. He's wide open. He'll just dance across the midline and give it off on the far side to number 19, Jeff Harris. And they throw the ball away, but backed up nicely by Jeff Cook. That's number 18, Henry Ciccaroni, we see now who brought the ball down. Saputo had his eye on the net. He, was, he, he took his eye off the ball. He was getting ready to make a shot, and that's why that ball missed his stick. But he now, is, once again, Hopkins goes into their very, very deliberate offense. Cook pulling all the way out, going against Haas. He'll try to roll dodge if he gets close to the goal. Comes back in, gets a double team, puts back out front to Brandy Schneck, quickly over to Chick Jr. He fires over top of the goal. Backed up back there by Carolina. Zaputo a little late getting over, and Kevin Griswold will get possession of the ball. Excuse me, not Kevin, that would be number 20, not Kevin Griswold, but number 20 would be John Shipper. That was a great play by, uh, a great play by Cook. They just it up to uh, Schneck. Schneck came in and all the time, I think, wanted to draw the player and get it over to uh, Ciccaroni to let him take that high crank shot from about 15 yards out. He got the shot, but it was a little bit high of the net. Now they're using midfielders to come up, bring the ball up, and that's Doug Hall, clears it easily. You know, Leaf, I'm wondering if this, if this slow down offense Hopkins has been using is going to hurt their momentum a little bit. It can do that, and we'll have to wait to see because the next eight minutes will tell us. Pete Vocal now rolls in, fires, and he's good! Haven't seen that kind of outside shooting in a run for quite a while as Vocal fires into the upper left hand corner, and North Carolina has tied this game 11 all with 8.21 remaining. That could be very deciding because you get the feeling that Hopkins is in total control of the game, yet the score is tied. Now this is the kind of thing that Carolina's been doing all day long. They've got the cannons out front. They love to shoot from out front. Vocal comes in, makes a nifty little move. He's got a 16-yard shot. That's the one he wants. Look at that. Nice fluid motion with a beautiful screen by Hill. Look at Monty Hill out in front who blocked the goalie's vision and the ball went to the upper left-hand corner. Holman was disgusted because he knew the screen was perfectly placed by Monty Hill number 15. You know, in the semifinal, North Carolina was uh, playing Navy. And late in the third quarter, the game was tied 6-all. It ended up 17-8, North Carolina. So they don't slow down in the fourth quarter. They pour it on in the fourth quarter. They're a team like Hopkins that if you give them a crack, if you break down in, in, in the important structure of your game, they'll take advantage of it. They've got an explosive attack, as you just pointed out. And if Hopkins lets up a little bit with their slow down tactics, if they can get the uh, transition game going, Hopkins may find, find themselves in trouble. A little bit of pressure now being applied by the Carolina attack on the Hopkins clearing personnel. Jeff Kendall now under a lot of pressure on the far side by Kevin Lamonte Hill, I believe it is. Oh! So Schneck. Schneck has a two on one, but he's not gonna get it cleared this easily. Now in the middle, Keeper in some, in some trouble. He's being picked up, but he has it cleared easily. Good stick work by the Hopkins defenseman. Bobby, talk about momentum. The last three goals were, have been scored by North Carolina. Hopkins hasn't scored since three minutes left in the third quarter. Doug Hall, Burnett, and Vogel have uh, tallied for North Carolina, and that can mean a lot for momentum when you only have seven minutes left in the championship game. The score is all tied. 11 all in the NCAA Division I Championship. Definitely some sudden death overtime possibilities. Now back out front. Hopkins once again staying very, very wide. Pulling Carolina out of the zone. Here comes Cook. Five goals so far today. Now is trying to Cook almost scores another one as it bounces right off the top pipe on a heck of a shot by Jeff Cook. Backed up over on the far side. We'll see what happens. Wait a minute. They the check the net. If it's a goal, we'll check to see if it's a hole in the net. It will be Cook's sixth goal. That ball may have ripped right through the net. They're going to read it right for it right now. Look, there's a hole. We're going to get the benefit of the replay. Of course, the referees won't. They're going to have to make a very tough judgment call. Cook put his hands up immediately after the shot went by the net. The net did ripple, but sometimes the goalie's stick goes back and hits the net, and it looks as if the ball hit it when actually it didn't. They're trying to make, here's a series of replay. The ball goes up. Yes, indeed, it looks like it could very well be. Yes, I think it was. It, ha it looked like it had to be a goal because the net ripples and the goalie stick did not hit it, which means that the ball was the only thing that could have. 
That it's ball went through. tough to call. It's a and they don't have the advantage tough. of the field that, that we have They don't replay. have the advantage of the replay. Absolutely. Anything they call has to be I would say the replay wasn't conclusive. Lee, from that it really wasn't conclusive. But it's only a judgment call. I kind of guess only because the goalie's stick didn't look like it was in position to hit the net that the ball uh, went through it. But it was a very close shot there. Not giving him the goal. No way they can because, the, as Bob mentioned, the replay wasn't even conclusive. Judgment call all the way. They fixed the net now so that there isn't any more judgment call. The ball will stay in Hopkins' possession. And still 11-11 tie. We'll see now what happens as Hopkins goes back on offense. Joe Saletti, number 12 with the ball. Bob, you take away that goal. You take away the two goals they missed at the change of the quarters. <laughs> That's a different they, ball game, they, they right? Have, yeah, three-goal lead right now. Back out to Jeff Cook. Hopkins staying wide to pull North Carolina out of the zone defense they've been playing most of the game. Back out to Saletti. Hopkins being very patient. 6.45 remaining in this fourth quarter, the final quarter of action in the NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championship. This whole place is really hushed. They're waiting for Hopkins to do their thing. The Cooks get a double team now. The ball knocked down. And the best time it's to run your double team is when the man has his back to you. And that's what happened there. But Saputo alertly picks the ball up. And so Hopkins maintains possession. Possession critical here with six minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game. Cook really took a double team there, but he can take those. He is a very stocky, very strong ball player. Here's co coach Henry Ciccaroni waving off his midfield. He wants to change on the fly. You'll see him come off one by one as uh, Jeff Cook on the screen is going to control the ball. He'll keep it there. Nobody will pressure him because he's too great a ball player. Here's the sideline. You see Coach Scroggs. And farther up, you see the players running on and off. Here they come. There's Jeff Kendall. Now like a warning to keep the ball in play. Charlie Phillips, the referee, has told him not to stall, keep the ball in play. And if the ball goes out of the box, even on a lost pass, Possession will go over to North Carolina. Watch Snack. Back inside to Cook. A nice save by Tommy Sears in a point blank shot. Sears looks for the quick opening, but he can't find it. He'll have to go back and set up behind the goal. Great play. Three of the best players on the field. Schneck to Cook and a great save, a fantastic, unbelievable save by Sears. Snuffing him at the goal. Monty Hill keeps it in play on an alert play. Get power. Here comes Dougie Hall. Dougie Hall rolling in. Carson scores! Unbelievable. Dougie Hall, the converted attack, and comes in with a fast break. He waited, he faked, he faked once, he faked twice, and he just it into the far side of the net to beat home and then go into the lead for North Carolina Tar Heels, the first time ever in a postseason championship game with five minutes left. It's their lead, 12 to 11. We'll take a look at it. Starts with, starts with Monty Hill on a great Monty play in the ball and play. Unbelievable, that's right. It comes down, Doug, Hill, Doug Hall gets the fast break. You see the ball sift through, and here's Hall running through with his speed. Now watch him, he takes his time, he lets that Carswell, Carswell misses for the defense. Doug Hall comes in, sights it up, takes his time, and fires it past home into the far pipe. And that gives him a one goal lead, very crucial lead. I tell you, the breaks are going their way. Take away three goals from Hopkins, and now they've got the one goal lead. on the fast break, but it's played beautifully by Lance Schneck, as Lance Schneck turns back Mike Burnett and kills the fast break. We'll wait to see if Willie Scroggs slows the ball down. 5-10 remaining. He's up by one goal. North Carolina up by one goal. Here comes Burnett. I'd say if Willie Scroggs slows down, that's going to be a crucial mistake. This team thrives on speed, quickness, and really running and gunning. They're into their fluid motion. They've scored one, two, three, four. Of the, last, the last four goals have been all Carolina. That's their game. Turn them loose and let them go. Carolina with a three-man stack in front of the goal. Now one man cuts down Hill. Now here comes Burnett. Burnett has his man beat. Turns and buys on the back. Hit shot right between the legs of Brian Holman. And Carolina goes up by two. A fantastic play, unbelievable by Burnett, number three, Mr. Everything for this North Carolina Tar Heel team. He's, he's got 22 goals and 30 assists. It's a praying menace delight. And I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> That's an in little emotion we have there. 4.45 remaining in, the, in this game. Here's Burnett. Burnett. This is an unbelievable shot. This guy is really class all the way. Awesome! Watch the move. Behind the back, right around the defenseman's legs, Holman had no chance to save that ball. 13 to 11, with four minutes and 45 seconds left, there's a timeout on the field, and now Hopkins has their backs against the wall. Defending national champions are being threatened by the Tar Heels, who two years ago never would have dreamed that they'd be here today. <laughs> 4.45 remaining in this game, and North Carolina with their largest lead of the game. In fact, so this is the first time Carolina's led in this game, I believe. I think it is, yeah. Back again to those three goals. So Car or Hopkins just had, we saw the one on the replay. One goal, or a questionable goal, could have been a goal by Cook. But it didn't, they didn't count it. 
and uh, rightfully so, it was questionable, but the two that they shot goal. in and were legitimate goals, but time had expired, not once, but twice earlier in this game. They've been taken away, and now North Carolina has the two-goal edge. 4.45 remaining in the NCAA Division I, the cross championship game, and it's been a great game, everything it was billed to be. And there's Mike Burnett. Mr. Everything for North Carolina, and he really has proven himself here today. He leads the team again in, with points. He's got 22 goals in the year, 30 assists, very unselfish. That, by the way, is not a great amount of points, 52. The reason being that this team is so well spread out in their offense. Everybody scores, everybody contributes, and they've got so many guns that one guy doesn't have to carry the whole load. Record attendance here today, 22,100. There's Coach Willie Scroggs. He has to feel pretty good, but you won't see him show the emotion. Very quiet, low-key individual. Now it's Howie Offit and Stenerson. They each face off now, super critical. Stenerson runs after it. Dougie Hall runs after it. Stenerson picks it up, and Carolina's going to have the ball on offense with four minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this game. You know, winning. Oh. Here comes That's Stenerson right. rolling in, and he's knocked down by Brandon Schneck on a heck of a hit. Schneck levels Stenerson, and Stenerson's 215 pounds. The ball kept back in play. Two men lose it. Now back towards the Hopkins goal. We'll see what this call is. The hitting is unbelievable. Hopkins knows they have to get the ball. What I was going to say, Bob, is that Hopkins has rarely been in this position. With four minutes left, there are two goals down. A critical penalty call right now. An unsportsmanlike conduct call goes against Coach Henry Ciccaroni. And Hopkins will be down a man Here's for a the minute hit. with 419 the, remaining. Watch the screen. We've got the hit. Here's Black bringing up a great shot with the handheld on the sideline. You see it coming in. And there's Burnett making the move. Black comes right at you. Look at this. Right to the sideline. Beautiful action. And the ball stayed on the field for another three or four, 40 seconds. The end, the combination of it, as Bob has mentioned, is that there's been an unsportsmanlike call against the bench of Hopkins. Is that right, Bob? Coach Henry Ciccaroni and his assistants were doing everything they could to uh, calm down Chick, as we see him now. But a very, very intense man and probably the best coach at the moment in college lacrosse, certainly with the best record in college lacrosse the, over the last certainly has years. the best record. 47, 22 straight wins coming into this game. Three straight national championships, unequaled by any team, going for his fourth this year, of course. He's won 47 of the last 48 games. This guy can really coach a team. There we see Jeff Cook. Jeff Cook waiting for an opportunity to go back and get try for his sixth goal of the day. What you're going to see now is that I missed the call. Is it a three-minute unsportsmanlike? No, it's just one minute. It's a one-minute penalty that cannot be broken. In other words, if they no, score that, a goal, it's a maligning lead. It's a maligning call, which I don't believe it was. But then it's a full serve time penalty. However, we believe this just to be an unsportsmanlike, and if they can, if Hopkins get the ball back, they will be even. All right, you'll see North Carolina eat up the, the, most of the 60 seconds and then try to get one good hard shot off. Back over on the far side, almost thrown away. Carolina has to be very deliberate here into Terry Martinello. We're underneath four minutes. Three minutes, 56 seconds left. Back into Johnny Hillmeyer. There's a shot, a nice save inside by Brian Holman. Shot taken from outside by Pete Bokel. You'll see a lot of pressure here now from Carolina on the ride. Up to Dave Black. Black gives it back to Holman. Holman gives it quickly over to Lance Schneck. They're trying to kill the time on this penalty. Back to Holman. Now on the far side. Time running off. 3.29 remaining in this game. Hopkins trying to kill the penalty. Penalty's still in. Now Holman gets, finds a man upfield. Bob, I would like to know the stats, but Hopkins so far has been shut out in the fourth quarter, and there aren't very many quarters of lacrosse that Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins gets shut out in. Peter Scott now in an attack. The penalty's all over. North Carolina getting one shot from the outside. Mike McGee, Joe Saletti, and Jeff Kendall now in on midfield offense for Hopkins. Here comes Kendall. Whichever team wins this game is going to enjoy an undefeated season. Jeff Cook now pushing in against Haas. Fires a shot, bounces off Haas' legs, goes out of bounds and into the stands. Souvenir for a young man over there. You know, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jeff Haas, Coach Scroggs has kept Haas on Cook the whole game, even though for one period of time, two quarters in particular, Cook scored four out of the five goals. There's Barnett. Good shot of Mike Burnett. But Coach Scroggs stayed with Haas. He's been playing Cook very, very strong, shutting out the, helping to shut out the Hopkins team in the last quarter so far. Here comes Chick Jr. 2.52 remaining in this game. He put the ball back behind his Zaputo. Back out front, a good shot inside. And they fire, and the ball bounces just wide of the goal as Cook was nailed at the last minute. Plenty of time to score two, three, or four goals for that matter. Johnny Haas made a great seconds. check right there, and he has to get a new stick. A stick is bent. He made a check against Cook to save that from being a real hard shot. His aluminum pole was bent in the process. Now he's over there trying to get new equipment. He's holding up. If he doesn't hurry, he can get a delay of game call. Now they call for play to begin. 
Back up to Zaputo. Over the far side. Cook once again fires. A great save by Tommy Sears. A great save on a low screamer off Jeff Cook's stick. And Sears the pick outlet pass. Here comes North Carolina. They're across the midfield line. They're going back on offense. Two minutes and 26 seconds left. Two and a half. Ball knocked down. A good play by Chickaroni Jr., but picked up alertly over there by number 11. That's Tommy Federico. Federico, the team captain. Still no possession. The ball rolling back in. Picked up nicely over there by Jamie Allen. Allen finds a man open. It's Burnett. And a good play by Brian Holman. Brian Holman alertly picks the ball up. Burnett's got it, though. Now flip back in. Here comes a man. And a shot taken inside by Tommy Federico. And backed up. Carolina puts the pressure on. 150 at the end of the game. North Carolina 13. Great John top is 11. And a great effort by Brian Holman. Incredible. That ball was all over the field. you got to give Hopkins credit. Holman came out 20 yards out of the crease. Timeout by North Carolina because they want to settle things down. They're in control and they want to stay that way. With only two minutes left, they don't want that running and gunning. Here comes Griswold off the field. All these players are giving it all. They're 100% out right now. Very hot and humid day, and they're putting it all on the field right now. As we heard a great term used at the Division III championship game, uh, one coach said that it's not a losing team, it's only a first place team and a second place team. Absolutely. Certainly that applies here today. Two great lacrosse teams, North Carolina and Johns Hopkins. Five of these teams that were one and two ranked most of the year. The stats for the year, the average stats per game, show you how evenly matched they are. Each team takes 50 shots per game, 150, 152. Each team averages 17 goals a game. Each team has 10 or 11 assists per game. And the only difference, really, is in the ground balls, which is uh, 62 for Hopkins against, or 63 and 72 for the North Carolina Tar Heels on the average. Very well matched, very evenly matched, and two great teams. A very risky thing to do. Brian Holman out of the goal, and they try to get the pass quickly in to an open goal, and they fire and score. Carolina has scored a very, very risky, up, uh, chancy thing that uh, uh, Johns Hopkins did. Carolina took advantage on a great play, a lead pass inside. I believe it went to number 18 to Jeff Homeyer. It was Jeff Homeyer. And Homeyer fires the goal that puts Carolina on one top by three. Those are the kind of things, I'll tell you, Hopkins has not been in this situation, I don't know how long it's been, to, to where they had to pull a goalie out. It's definitely something they don't practice. And they had Homeyer out of the goal, double teaming the baseline. North Carolina knew it. They fed Homeyer with an over-the-shoulder pass that came right inside his defender, and he had no goalie to shoot against dumped it right in, and that gives him a three-goal cushion. It looks like it may be all over with a minute and 54 seconds left. Ball pops straight up in the air. It'll be run down by Chickaroni. Chickaroni does not get it, however. Peter Vocal does not get it. And now it's smeared neatly off the grass. A fast break. There comes Burnett rolling in. Cradles once. Fires wide of the goal to the right-hand side as Brian Holman has dropped to the ground to stop the low shot. I know Burnett would like to have that back for one more step. Oh, you're not kidding. One-on-one -on -one with a goalie, that's uh, every attack man's dream. And that was a beautiful fast break. All the times that Hopkins has controlled the faceoff, now is when they need one. But North Carolina picks it up. And here comes the fast break. Burnett dishes it off to the right side. It's very much of an accuracy shot. He has to hit that pipe or maybe within three inches of it. He missed it, but he maintained possession for the Tar Heels. Now Carolina will be pressured to keep the ball inside the box. Big feed backside over to Dougie Hall. Hall has a man open. It's wide open, comes out and fires. A nice save by Brian Holman. As Carolina doesn't know anything about stalling, they go right to the cooker. Now Kevin Kilner with the ball under a lot of pressure. Being run down by Griswold. Picked up by Kilner. One minute and 22 seconds showing on the clock. And that'll be a call coming. It'll be a hold call coming up against North Carolina. Hold call on Griswold. Griswold just, again, putting it all on the field. He's 100% hustle. Here's an All-American midfielder who was switched to attack. Again, here's Griswold, 25. Watch him come flying in. He's going over the head to try to get to the stick. He brushed the head too much, but the right hand on the hip. See the right hand? It came down off the stick hand, came down on the hip. That's a hold call. Hopkins goes up. They need this goal desperately, and there's been a timeout called on the field. Timeout, John Hopkins. Hopkins calls it. They've got to get a goal here. Not only that, they need to get two more after it, so they're going to make some plans right now for the play they want and then what they're going to do afterwards. 121 remaining in this game. North Carolina 14, Johns Hopkins 11. Hopkins still, Bob, has been, has been shut out in the fourth quarter. I bet you that's some kind of rarity. I don't recall Hopkins being shut out in any quarter, and particularly the fourth quarter of a game where they had to have a goal. Looking down now, both teams huddled up. Last North Carolina six huddle. goals have been scored. It was 11 to 8 at one point in the third quarter. The last six goals have been scored by North Carolina, which shows you a lot about this team's class. First time in the championships. Here they are in a sudden situation of uh, where they've got to score. They're down by three goals. It could very easily have been Hopkins going ahead by five or six, which would have put it out of reach. But just the other thing happened. They scored six straight goals, and now they're ahead, 14-11. They're in the catbird seat with a minute and 20 seconds left. 
That last goal that was scored, of course, by Homeyer is a demonstration of the great speed of this North Carolina team where Homeyer simply outran the defenseman in the race to the goal. Here comes Brendan Schneck over to Ciccaroni. Ciccaroni fires a bouncer wide of the goal to the left-hand side. And uh, Hopkins desperately needs desperately needs a goal here, 113 remaining. That play was set up so that they wanted to get the slide to Schneck and then dish the Ciccaroni for his shot, but North Carolina is not taking the bait. They're gonna make whoever shoots, they're gonna make him shoot from a good 18, 20 yards out and give him nothing easy on the crease. They don't care who shoots. Now back out to Brendan Schneck. Schneck's gonna fire as soon as he can get an opening. There he fires and scores! As he comes racing in front of the goal, we're starting to see Brendan Schneck take charge here as Hopkins needs a goal. They move back to the two, 108 remaining. North Carolina 14, Johns Hopkins 12. So much for the shutout in the fourth quarter, and that's why it doesn't happen to Hopkins very often because they have great players like Brendan Schneck. Watch the face dodge, he comes in, pulls a stick back, and then when the guy goes behind, no, he doesn't go behind, he just comes right across the face of the crease, 10 yards in front, and just scoots it right in real low and hard on goalie Tommy Sears. A great shot, a fantastic shot by one of the better players, if not the best player on this field. You see the fans lying on the side of the uh, perimeter of the field, Bob. It's gonna be mayhem here in about a minute and 20 seconds, a minute and eight seconds. The face off all critical now. Stenerson against Offit. Stenerson steps inside, rotates around, still no possession. Offit gets it. He's got the ball. He roses it off to Chicaroni. Cook loses it. The Cook under a lot of pressure. He falls down. Burnett's trying to get the ball away from him. Cook still controls. Great effort by Jeff Cook. Cook's racing in. 49 seconds showing on the clock. They need two. Cook rolls in and fires and scores. Cook scores. It's now 14 to North 12, excuse me, 14 to 13. North Carolina over Johns Hopkins, 45 seconds showing on the clock. You just saw one of the greatest plays ever at any time by any lacrosse player. Jeff Cook single-handedly going through five or six players. You're gonna see it again. We missed the part when he was on his back, dodging about three or four players, but here he is unassisted all the way down the field. He's taken out of the play with a beautiful uh, check and he put it in from about 10 yards out. This guy can do it all. Schneck and Cook, you're gonna see him go down for the last 45 seconds. It's not over yet, Bob. Now Stenerson against Offit. The faceoff, extremely critical here. One goal difference. North Carolina 14, Johns Hopkins 13. 45 seconds remaining in this game. Stenerson flips it out, it rolls towards the Hopkins goal. It's an offsides. Offsides as Lance Schneck broke over the line too soon. Schneck trying desperately to get possession of the ball, released a little too soon. Charlie Phillips right on top of the play, makes the good call, and now Carolina has possession. You can't break that line until possession is called by the referee. Schneck wanted to get the ball in his stick and take off and have it called simultaneously. He was a half a beat too quick anticipating it. He needed to get it down. Now they're in trouble. There are easily several thousand people ringing the field here. We don't know if they're Carolina fans or they're Hopkins fans, but they've seen a, a terrific, a super lacrosse game. They're all with Carolina man. leading. We've asked that the spectators get 10 yards from the sideline. As Bob has just mentioned, we've got thousands and thousands of fans, each and every one of them a lacrosse lover, seeing the greatest game of the year right here, a one goal difference between the one and two ranked team in the country, an upset in the making, the two team over the one team. And really that's for their own safety, Lee, because that ball comes anywhere between 90 and 100 miles an hour in a shot. And most spectators aren't alert to the fact the shot's coming their way. They're watching all the action, and if someone could definitely, definitely be injured. And also a player running out of bounds could hurt someone. Now, Carolina's holding the ball. They're on offense. 30 seconds remaining in this game. That's right. It's the four corners for Carolina, and you can see them set it up just like you've seen the basketball team do. Burnett pulls between two men, looks back out front. They give it off to... Local now a feed inside with a nice snare and Griswold is hammered as he loses the ball. Carswell under a lot of pressure. Griswold hacking away at Carswell. The ball rolls out of bounds on the line and will go over to North Carolina. Griswold knew he lost ball. the ball. He knew he had to get it back. So he chased Carswell all the way down and finally ran the ball out of bounds. Carswell made an excellent play too, but he was foot was out of bounds and he couldn't do anything about it. Only 12 seconds left. Griswold and Lance Schneck. The matchup on the sideline. You'll see Griswold just take off. Nobody Double team him. now. Here comes Brendan Schneck. The Schneck brothers are going to try to stop Griswold. Griswold, a long lob pass in the back of the corner to Mike Burnett. And we'll see what the call is. They want the ball back. For some reason, they want to start the play over. But if they do that, they're going to have, well, the clock hasn't been affected. They're going to the clock start it not moved. It's still 12 seconds. Now, here comes Griswold. Griswold under a lot of pressure. Gets by Lance Schneck. Schneck checks the ball out of bounds. And Hopkins will gain possession with seven seconds on the clock. 
I would say the chances are one in a jillion that they can do this. We're just seeing Holman right, come Holman back on the field. The game. Holman was told. not in. He was out of the goal. They had absolutely no goalie in there, something we didn't recognize. They were double teaming the ball with no goalie, and it worked. But seven seconds is not much time to get the ball all the way up. You're going to see a Gilman clear here without question. Now we're going to bring it up. Here's Brendan Schneck on the end line. Griswold. Brendan Schneck's going to Gilman it. He fires it. Five, he takes it all four, the way up the field. Three, and it's blocked down by the North two, Carolina players. And watch one, North Carolina come It's all over. over. North Carolina hey. has won the Division I NCAA Lacrosse Championship. And thousands of people are pouring out of the field. What a scene. North Carolina, the champ. They've upset Hopkins 14 to 13. And we'll just take a look at it right now. Look at the Carolina players jumping all over the coast. Unbelievable. Watch the fans. Here's the North Carolina tearing, tearing the net apart. Souvenir net here for all the fans that came so far from this North Carolina Tar Heel team, who 10 years ago didn't even know what a lacrosse stick was. Now they're seeing the beauty of the game played at its finest, finest moment, the championship at Division I. They are now the reigning champions, beating the best team ever, Johns Hopkins. A little disconsolate, probably more than a little disconsolate, but they have nothing to be ashamed of losing North Carolina 14 to 13 and winning three national championships in the last four years. Absolutely, if you look at the scoring, it's just like we thought it would be. Here we are, 14 to 13. Here's a very, very happy North Carolina team. And we're gonna uh, have a chance to see some of the controversy, uh, the controversial goal uh, when we come back in a minute or two. But right now, let's just gloat with the fact that two of the greatest teams to ever play the game were in a great representative championship game with North Carolina squeaking out in a 14 to 13 victory over a, over a real, real, real class Johns Hopkins Blue Jay team. You got to think back also, Lee. Uh, just before uh, about the middle of the fourth quarter when Hopkins slowed the ball down. Thank you very much, Bob. As you can see, we're right in the middle of a little bit of mayhem here. These boys from North Carolina are very, very proud of what they have done. They've taken home the championship, 12-0, perfect season. I'm with Coach Willie Scroggs. Willie, fantastic game. It went right, away, right down to the wire like we thought it would against a great Hopkins team. Your thoughts? I, I thought that our kids hung in um, by a couple of goals. But we didn't lose our poise. We kept trying. We kept coming after them. And we got some goals near the end of the game. Caught them in a situation where they had to chase us a little bit and pulled away. And I'm very proud our kids did not fold against this fine Hopkins team. They, they, they really did. And I've got to say that it was in the fourth quarter that the, uh, the game was held to no scores for Hopkins. So they were almost shut out until the last two minutes of the game. That had to be unexpected for your part, Willie. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. I, I'm the worst guy in the world for statistics. I don't know what the score was. I still didn't know what the score was in the game. I think we won by a goal. Our kids hung in, and Hopkins a fine team. Start off a little bit slow. Tommy Sears looks like he wasn't judging the ball very well because maybe all the grass that was underneath his feet. Was that a problem to him? They mentioned that. Well, they got great shooters, and their kids uh, shoot the ball. They release it real quick. Brendan Schneck and, uh, and uh, Jeff Cook. You never know where they're going high or low with the ball, and, and uh, I don't think it was the time he wasn't playing well. It's just that they're fine shooters. Well, fantastic job by you, Willis Scroggs. It's a 12-0 year. I don't know where you go from here. Next year, now you've got a reputation to uphold. We're going to go back up to Bob Smith. Once again, the final score, North Carolina 14, Johns Hopkins 13.